They've let the young people have some fun, but they have also worked them very hard at the beginning of what will amount to if these two teams should wind up in a postseason game a very long season. Well, both teams, Keith, came to New York, uh, the New York area, a few days ago. Both of them saw Broadway play as we take a look at uh, Woods, the uh, receiver, the uh, kick returner for Tennessee. He's the man they want to bring back. Up in front of him will be the Davis tailbacks. It's Keith and Vando. Not related. So we're ready to go with a kickoff classic. Giant Stadium in the Meadowlands. That's a good kick. It's high. Hangs up there. Goes to the five. Wood coming right. Gets pinned in and dropped at about the 19-yard line. Now here's the offense for Tennessee. Simon, Galbert, Kirk, Bruin still line up. The heart of the Tennessee offensive front will be Galbert and Bruin, the two guards, 265, 285 in the center, Kirk, 255. In the backfield, all speed burners. Outside, Miller. On the other side, Rollins. And the tight ends at Tennessee usually have some speed, too. Cleveland, very quick at the wing back. The running backs will be Davis, that is Keith Davis, and Charles Wilson. Jeff Francis, Mount Prospect, Illinois. Going to throw it on the first play of the ball game. Gets it away, and it goes to Wilson out of the backfield, and Wilson is up across the 30 to a first down near the 34. Of course, Johnny Majors and the Tennessee Volunteers know that Iowa is going to pay a lot of attention to their wide receivers with all the speed. A good first call of the game you send the receivers deep and throw it to your back coming out of the backfield. Iowa with a good tackle there. It's another first down. From the 34 of Tennessee, Rollins and Middlebrook now two tight ends of the Tennessee lineup, and they'll run the ball as Keith Davis carries out near the 37, brought down by Joe Schuster, defensive tackle. The defensive unit for the Iowa Hawkeyes will line up this way with Schuster, Haight, and Kepi. The three big guys in the middle, and they're all big. Your outside people are Burke and Mott, Puck and Quas, the linebackers, and those linebackers are fierce. Second down and about seven with the defensive secondary reflected there. Yes, that Sistrunk is a familiar name. He's the nephew of Otis. And a hitter. And Francis looks. Quick pop comes to Miller. Blockers in front. Pulling guard out there. Shakes him loose. He's got a first down as he reaches. The 47 of Tennessee, and Dwight Sistrunk, the free safety, made the stop. This is a wide receiver screen, a little fake. Both wide receivers were on this side of the field. Miller comes back for the safe screen pass and then uses his speed and running ability to get upfield. Tennessee will do that a lot this afternoon. Rollins is out now. Moore is in with Woods. Receivers, but Tennessee stays with the ground game as Charles Wilson, a senior out of Pritchard, Alabama, carries, and Merton Hanks brings him down. Hanks is a sophomore out of Dallas, Texas. Wilson is in there at the fullback position, but the big man now, William Howard, six footer, 240 pounder from Lima, Ohio, comes in. Reggie Cobb, a redshirt freshman from Knoxville, steps into the tailback position, number 34. Tennessee giving Iowa a lot of different offensive looks. Francis pops it, gets it to Miller, but playing heady on the left corner spot is James Pipkins, a sophomore out of Dallas, and he laid the helmet on him. Keith, the defensive style for Iowa is a loose, containing style of defense. They are mostly time, time play three deep to try to take away the deep passing that Tennessee likes to employ. They're not very... Uh, uh, good in the secondary they've lost three of their four uh, defensive backs from last year third down and a long five for tennessee near the iowa 48 francis straight back gets good protection steps up and will carry it himself will dive for the marker and get a first down near the iowa 40. schuster and puck the tacklers jj puck senior cedar rapids So Tennessee is moving the ball, moving the chains upfield. They're just short of the Iowa 40. They have it first down, and you're going to see probably at least 50 people on each side play today, maybe even more. Bernard 
McGuire is in there for the first time today for the balls. It looks like Francis checks off. What a run it. Davis. No. Cobb. Reggie Cobb, who is 205 pounds, and they want to season him as much as they can early on because they need it. They need a big tailback that can move that ball for them. In talking with Johnny Majors, Cobb is listed third on the depth chart, but he said that he is going to get him in there early because he is something special. He's got the speed and quickness and uh, the durability that they would like to have in there more often this year. He picked up almost four yards, call it second down and a long six. And again, Francis, watching the Iowa defensive people move around a little bit, is checking off, changing his play. Big fullback, Howard, William Howard, weighs in, as we said, at 240 and has pretty good acceleration for a man that size. I think what you're seeing here is the experience of Jeff Francis, at quarterback, really is, is sets the tone for the whole ball game. On the other side, Iowa's quarterback is new. This is going to be his first start. You know he's going to be a little bit nervous. For Tennessee, they've got an experienced leader out there in Jeff Francis. He's got all kinds of weapons to play with, and he's just coolly taking them down the field. They've run the ball five times so far in this opening possession, and five different people have carried it. They pitch it back. Goes to Howard. Howard running out of the tailback position, and the big guy slams it for a first down at the Iowa 27-yard line, and that is the sixth different offensive look that Tennessee has shown Iowa. Howard, number 35, is listed as a fullback. Had to play tailback a lot last year. Did a lot of the tough running, short yardage and goal line. In fact, led the nation at one point in scoring until he himself was injured. You take a look at Hayden Fry, he knew that his defense would be a problem. Well, I'll tell you, Bob, if Tennessee continues to grind it like this and stick it in the end zone, that's really going to jack them up. Francis straight back to throw it, popped it down the middle, had a man wide open and missed him. The receiver, number three, Nate Biddlebrooks, the tight end, was lonesome. There wasn't anybody within six, seven yards of him, and Francis just simply missed him. And you saw a good shot of it. Uh, in the middle of the field, Iowa sometimes will blitz their linebackers but still play a three-deep zone. Let's take a look at the end of it. Now, Middlebrooks really didn't give him a good target. He was drifting away from him. Francis didn't know where he was going to stop. So they put Big William Howard back in that setback position. But Francis drops the throw, and he'll go down as Joe Schuster gets the sack and his third tackle of the ball game. Joe, 6'5", 260, fifth-year senior out of Faribault, Minnesota. Schuster is getting his first opportunity to play a lot this year. Uh, he's uh, starting for the first time. The man that everybody on the Tennessee line is worried about is the nose guard, Hank, the brother of the New York Jet offensive lineman, and he is projected as a, an all-big tenor. Loss is all the way back to the 34. They've got to go inside the 17. It is third down and 17. Francis has got a problem. Dumps it off. Pass is incomplete. And it brings up fourth down and 17 for Tennessee. And the ball is back on the 34. All right, let's see if we get a call to Rich, the place kicker. Bill Rich, Jr. out of Fort Lauderdale, number 17, is on the field. Interesting story on Phil Rich, Bob. In 1984, he saw an ad the University of Tennessee Chattanooga had put in the newspaper that wanted a punter. So he goes over. He doesn't make the team as a punter. Didn't think really he could succeed at Tennessee with its great history of punters. Came over and became the place kicker. The ball is down. The kick is up. 51-yard try. No good. Hooked it left. Long enough, but he couldn't hold the line with it. And so Tennessee is impressive grinding along, but the Hawkeyes get a big play from Joe Schuster, and they stop him. Dan McGuire about to take his first snap. His brother Mark, the baseball player, has this advice for his younger brother right now. I think the, the biggest message is just uh, relax. I know it's your first, first big game, national TV. Uh, once you get that first ball, you know, hike to you, I think everything will go away. You just get right down to business and uh, do what you're capable of doing. Don't try to do anything outside yourself. Just do what you're capable of doing. That's throwing a long ball. <laughs>
Pretty sound advice. From the 34-yard line, the Hawkeyes will go to work now, and they'll line up with Kevin Harmon at tailback, and Grant Goodman will be at fullback. But we will see a lot of Dave Hudson and Rick Bayless before this day is done. He handles the first snap all right. He gives the ball to Kevin Harmon, who is from Laurelton, New York. And the 200-pound senior, younger brother of Ronnie Harmon of Buffalo, moves the ball up to the 38-yard line, so he picks up the better part of four on his first carry. Bob, is it a problem for a guy 6'8", just the simple physical mechanics of hunkering down to get the ball and then getting away from the snap? Well, it's, it, it takes a little longer to get away because you got a lot of le legs and a lot of knees and elbows, but uh, sure helps to look over the line of scrimmage. Dave Hudson is in there at fullback now. McGuire's first pass of the ball game. He's going to air it out. He's got Quinn Early downfield, and a good defensive play knocks it away. Quinn Early from Great Neck, New York, has the ball slapped out of his hands by the free safety Kelly Days. Days playing center field for Tennessee. Let's go. Let's go back to what we were saying earlier about Hayden Fry being an innovator, having a few surprises. The first pass that he asked his young quarterback to throw is what he does best. He lets him throw the ball deep downfield to his speed receiver, Quinn Early. I think it's a good way to kind of blow it out. If you've got any nerves, let's just get rid of them right off the bat. Iowa going to wide sets now. Put it in the air. Great catch by Early. Quinn Early, who's quite an artist. His brother's in the commercial art business, and Quinn, quite a artist himself is brought down by the inside backer Kelly Ziegler dropping off to cover the zone but he made a heck of a catch for an Iowa first down let's set the lineup for you for Iowa Wester Anderson uh, Divis and Cratch are the big guys up front the offensive set behind them you have early at the wingback position they started with Goodman and Harmon but you've now got Hudson in the ball game and Morrow who's not the fastest guy on the field, but a very clever receiver. Handoff goes to Kevin Harmon, and Kevin Harmon is ridden down by the blitzing wild bunch of Tennessee. Cedric Klein, the strong safety, was blitzing, and he got his man. The guard, Divis, number 58, will pull and lead. He gets knocked off, and Klein, as you said, blitzing across the line of scrimmage. One thing that about Ken Donahue, the defensive coordinator for the Volunteers, he won't sit there. He's going to do something different. He's not going to wait for you to attack him. He's going to be across that line of scrimmage. Loss of six yards. Ball comes back inside the 42. McGuire turns on a little delay, gives it to Harmon. Good spin by Harmon. Good pursuit by Tennessee. And they stop him just short of midfield. The defensive lineup for the Volunteers will go like this. Big guys up front are David Johnson, Michael Whitehead, and Marion Hobby. The backers in Tennessee famous for its linebackers. Mike Kelly, Kelly Ziegler, Keith DeLong, and Darren Miller. And the defensive secondary, Terry McDaniel and Victor Peppers are the corners. Cedric Klein and Kelly Days are the safety. In that lineup for Iowa, that's Dave Alexander at the right guard position. Not Anderson, as we showed it. Now you see, now here comes that head game between Ken Donahue and uh, Young McGuire. Tennessee gave him a whole different defensive look. He did the right thing, I guess, Bobby. Call time out. He'll go talk to the man about it. We'll be back. Let's go back and take a look at the Young McGuire. If you wonder why he called time out, the two linebackers here are going to move into the line. The free safety is going to move up. He knows there's a blitz coming. He probably didn't know how to get out of it. As you see the two linebackers moving up, the safety in the deep middle coming up. As Keith said, the mind game begins, and this is what McGuire is going to see from the, uh, the old... <laughs> I told you, I spoke with him yesterday. <laughs> I talked to Donahue, very impressive. And this is what you see right here McGuire is looking at. He's looking at those linebackers. You can't see their eyes because the sun is behind them. From the 45, third down and 12 for the Hawkeyes. And whistle stop him. I think that left guard might have been moving. Somebody was moving in the offensive front. Illegal procedure on the offense. Five yard penalty, third down. See, when the, sh the quarterback is a little shaky, it spreads. Right. And although Hayden said that McGuire is a very good quarterback, a lot of leadership, he's got to be a little bit uncertain in his first game, especially uh, 
up in this area national television and that penalty came off a timeout mcguire going deep again loops it down early's there he's got it boy he's a heck of a receiver that was pretty good coverage by andre kramer and the big kid put it a mile high in the air and dropped it gently right into his arm side of all the blitzing and stunning that McGuire is probably going to see is if you can pick it up and block it. You see uh, Ziegler 49 and the safety days 39 blitzing. If you can block it, you've got one-on-one -on -one coverage and a cannon for an arm at quarterback. Early is their fastest man. You're going to get some big plays if you can pick it up. That one good for 38 yards, and the Hawkeyes are knocking on the door down at the Tennessee 23, and a deep drop set up a screen. Ball goes to Harmon. Kevin Harmon to the sidelines and out of bounds at the 16-yard line. Tony Nelson made the tackle for the Volunteers. Well, the other thing that impressed me about that last long pass, the 38-yard gainer, with the blitz coming in his face was his ability to kind of find some time. He moved around in the yep. pocket. He said he was 6'8". We didn't know how well he was going to move. It seems to me that he moves pretty well within yeah, that does. pocket. It does. All right, they've sent early up now to the top of your picture. Morrow is to the left side or bottom of the picture. He's got one-on-one -on -one coverage back there. Ball is handed off inside. Ball goes to Dave Hudson, 235-pound senior out of Waxahachie, Texas. And he's inside the 15 to about the 14-yard line. Keith DeLong, of course, that's a famous name in Tennessee football history. Remember Steve, I'm sure many of you do, and his dad. 33 is his number, 210-pound linebacker. You don't see the linebackers at Tennessee oftentimes. Being, they're not terribly big. But, I remember uh, one that played with me, uh, the original Miami Dolphins, named uh, Frank Emanuel. Yep. <laughs> he was a pretty good uh, college player. Never turned out to be a great uh, pro player, but certainly was a fine player in his own right. Too much time. That'll cost him five. Dead ball. Illegal procedure on the offense. They're down. There's so many things a young quarterback has to concern himself with. First of all, he gets to play. He's got to get it to the rest of the men and remember the snap count, and that's a problem sometimes. But then you get to the line of scrimmage and you forget about the clock. You're looking at the defense. Are they going to blitz? What am I going to check to? It's not unusual. They got Early and Morrow together on the top of the picture. They're going that way with it. Ball is thrown to Quinn Early. Reaches around on as he comes spinning around in front of Keith DeLong and makes the catch. He is just short, however, of the first down. They had put the two wide receivers together for the first time today. And they're uh, just about a yard short. Take a look at early number one. As you see the blitz coming to the inside. If this ball would have been further to the outside, he may have been able to catch it and keep going. But as it is, it's a little behind him. It's a nice catch, and it's a short situation for a first down. Maybe fourth and one, and it looks like they're going to go for it. Harmon is the deep man out of the power eye. It goes to the up man, Hudson, and Hudson over the right side behind Anderson and Alexander, and Wester will get the first down for Iowa. And they're going to mark it at the Tennessee 11. All right, now we come to a point where perhaps we'll see Iowa try to find a way. We might even see them go to a double tight end. No, they won't either because Cook's coming out. But they've got tight end Cook, 6'4", 230. Mike Flagg, 6'6", 250. Tennessee's back there with one cornerback at 5'8", 155 pounds in Victor Pepper. And what did Hayden say when we asked him about it? He says, we, we talked, talked about, about it. it. <laughs> 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 we talked about it. <laughs> Flag's in the game, the big tight end. Their tight end stand up right. They lob it for early. He won't get this one. Pretty good coverage there by Victor Peppers. Uh, as Johnny Major said, he's not very big, but he can jump out of town. And you got a penalty flag thrown at the goal line. Well, let's see what that's all about. Peppers had the inside position. I didn't see all that much contact between them, but then the, my angle's different. Pass interference on offense. the offense. I thought so. 15 yards. Loss of down, 
second down. The Peppers had the inside position and early trying to get to the ball was uh, pushing and shoving him a little bit. So let's take a look at it. Well, let's take a look at it. Peppers number eight is the man we were talking about. Only five eight. There's early. You can't really see it from this angle, but he may have been pushing the back of Peppers with his right hand. There's a little bit better angle. Right there would be your shove just yeah. before the ball got there. So as uh, Joe Quimjot said, it's 15-yard penalty to Walsh it down. So it comes second down back at the 26 to give the ball to Hudson, and Hudson stacked up by the Tennessee pursuit. So both teams moved the ball pretty well until they got down toward um, Hallelujah Land, and things have gotten a bit stickier. And most of that yardage was passing. 58 yards passing and only eight yards rushing, so they're doing it on the arm of McGuire. Well, they tested uh, the 5'8 cornerback. <laughs> he sure did. Yep. Like Major said, he could jump, and he uh, certainly fought that one off. Third down and 24. McGuire to throw. Goes short with it. Intended for Kevin Harmon out of the backfield, and he sawed in half by Andre Kramer, number one, the senior from Baltimore for Tennessee. And that'll bring up fourth down. The blitz goes on. Watch this man here. They're all going to blitz. The safety's going to come out of the middle of the field. Unfortunately for McGuire, he didn't have anybody in the deep middle of the field. To the left of your screen, the pressure was there, and he just had to dump it off short. Yeah, if he'd have drifted the tight end down in there, it would have been a dynamite play for him, but he didn't. And now Rob Houtland comes into the ball game. Houtland, of course, with that last gas field goal to win the Holiday Bowl for them. The kick is up. It's plenty long, and it's good. So at four minutes and 53 seconds, a 42-yard field goal from Rob Houtland gives the Iowa Hawkeyes the lead over Tennessee, three to nothing. And you get the feeling that this fifth kickoff classic is going to be just as good as the others have been. Last year was a dandy ball game. Iowa leading three to nothing, a 42-yard field goal that came after 14 plays. Hawks had the ball five minutes and nine seconds. All right, Iowa will kick off. George Murphy, a junior, uh, sidewinder, 5'9", 150, from Greenwood, South Carolina. Telecast of this 1987 kickoff classic being produced in association with Raycom Sports, and we're ready now with a kickoff. Deep man is Thomas Wood, sophomore from Gallatin, Tennessee. Again, it's a very high kick. Angles toward the sideline. Woods lets it bounce. Picks it up on the two. Didn't have any choice. And he's nailed at about the 17. Coming up next, ABC Sports will present the 87 U.S. Amateur Golf Championship. Eric Repman and Bill Mayfair. Top two amateurs in the match play finale from Jupiter, Florida. Our coverage begins at 4.30 Eastern, 3.30 Central, and 1.30 Pacific. It was Bill Mayfair that won the public links. He's a senior out at Arizona State University, and Eric Redmond graduated from the University of Tennessee this year. So I imagine uh, that volunteer got off the golf course in a hurry and went looking for a television set. It's first down. Balls now short of the 15. Francis will run it. Give it to Reggie Cobb. And Cobb will get it up for four to the 18-yard line. Let's go in and take a look in the trenches, at the play in the trenches. A couple of key battles. 64 there is Hate. He'll be going up against an All-American in uh, Galbraith, number 76, and also Bruin, number 75. Both guards for Tennessee. Very strong players. It'll be an interesting battle we'll be following today. Second down, call it seven. More seven than six, and Francis rolls it out. Throws it in the ground. He was trying to dump the ball to Keith Davis. Davis really didn't have any place to go because J.J. Puck was all over him anyway, so it's an incomplete, incomplete pass. Third down and seven coming up. 
Donna Majors has done a good job at this uh, Tennessee program ever since he came back uh, home, as he say, he was runner-up Heisman Trophy uh, several years ago. I was kidding him the other night. I said, uh, you and I got a lot in common. <laughs> we were both runner-ups. Third and seven. We've got three wide up. Pressure is on. 64 is after him. Hate got loose. Francis's pass is thrown into the sidelines incomplete. So that time, big Dave Haight, 6'3", 260, a senior from Dyersville, Iowa, got loose in the middle and chased the quarterback out. So they'll have to punt it. Haight, an all-Big Ten player last year. We spoke uh, just a couple of plays ago how he would be a key for that Hawkeye defense putting pressure, and that time he did flush Francis out of the pocket. His big brother ain't too bad either. <laughs> Number one draft choice for the Jets was injured. He's been playing very well, I was told, this morning. Bob Garman spins it. High, soft spiral. Peter Marciano, nephew of Rocky from Brockton, Mass, is cut down at the 45-yard line. A 46-yard punt, a 9-yard return. Time remaining first quarter. Three minutes and 49 seconds, and the Iowa Hawkeyes have the ball at a 3 to nothing lead. Well, everybody's here. Dr. Julian, well, Bill Julian brought the band. They're here. The cheerleaders are here. And I'm told close to 9,000 folks came from Tennessee to see the ball game. All right, Iowa, very good field position. Their own 45-yard line. Harmon and Hudson are the setbacks behind McGuire. Early and Morrow. Morrow has not seen the ball yet. He's a possession-type receiver. Will work over the middle. Tennessee defense creeping around, creeping around. Four-man front. McGuire stands up, goes for early. Off his hands, incomplete. Peppers came in and belted him, but actually the ball was right in his hands, and he had the opportunity to catch that ball. The ball was a little bit high, Keith. The timing was not uh, real good on him. McGuire has a limited number of checkoffs, and it seemed like that time he was using one of them. Really didn't have the ball out there. He was he was open, but when the ball got there, Peppers had already closed that, that margin and hit him just as he was catching it. Second down, 10. Straight back. Whips it too high. That pass was intended for Jim Morrow, the senior from Des Moines. And there's no way at 6'1", he's going to haul that one down. It's <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Again, though, it's a, it's a, there's some mechanics involved here with the very tall man throwing the ball. You have a tendency, I would think, to throw the ball at your own height. Well, I, I think you'll adjust to that after a while. Uh, with your receivers running downfield. I, I think the big advantage is you're not going to get many of them batted back in your face. Your vision is going to be great, but the other disadvantage is the, the other defensive people are going to see you pretty well, too. Three wideouts on third and ten. Pressure on him. Pass thrown to Mike Flagg, the tight end. Flagg's a big man, 6-6. Six, six. And he goes pounding along, and they're not going to give him the first down. Go to mark him one yard short. Kelly Ziegler was riding him like a Bronco and uh, just flag at 6'6", 250, just kept on carrying him. It's a nice uh, play by McGuire. He looks downfield, he looks to his right, and then he comes back all the way over as an outlet. Now Flag knows he's got to get to that first down. His knee hits right there. It's just a crossing route. Ziegler's going to pick him up, and really, he's flare control. This is not the number one receiver, probably number three receiver, but a nice job trying to get the first down. They're going for it on fourth and one. Give it to Hudson. He died. He's got it. He didn't get it by all that much, but the way they've marked him, it looks to me like they're going to be in contact with the end of the chain. That's a bit of a gamble early on in the ball game to go on fourth and one at your opponent's 46-yard line. They've got it right down precisely on the 45. It's just a matter of whether or not the nose of the ball is going to reach the end of the chain. No, no, two inches short. Well, it was the same play that Fry went for on fourth down a little earlier in the game and made it. This time, K. 
Ken Donahue in the press box changes his defense as we take a look from the end zone. Ziegler is 49. He fills right in the gap. And there's penetration. And DeLong, number 33, is there to put the stop. Dave Alexander took a hit. The right guard, he was the man that they were trying to follow, and he got turned aside a little bit. And Iowa starting at their own 45, now gives over the ball to Tennessee at their 45, and a heck of a play by Merton Hanks. They were trying to dump the ball to the wideout, Thomas Woods, and Hanks almost had six points. He certainly did, and it's no surprise to the Haw Hawkeyes that they like to throw a lot of those wide receiver screens where the receiver will come back behind the line of scrimmage. That time they were set for it. Almost picked it off. You know, they kid Merton Hanks. He's from Texas, and he says if he could sing, he'd probably be a country singer. <laughs> With that kind of name and being from Texas. Tennessee's been incomplete now on five straight passes. Second down and ten. And there's some movement. Right tackle for Tennessee, Eric Still. Got going a little too soon. He's a big sophomore, 270-pounder from Germantown, Tennessee. Dead ball. Illegal procedure on the offense. Second down. You'll see number 79 take his move right there. Yes, lead That's it forward. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, forward. Well, he's a sophomore. This is his first game. We talk about McGuire's first game. It's also the first game for that young man, and I'm sure he's got some nerves, too. Hard to control that big body once he starts moving. <laughs> run it. Looking for some daylight. It is Reggie Cobb. There isn't much there as uh, Quas comes over to lock his leg. Brad Quas, 6'2", 225, a sophomore from Des Plaines, Illinois. Quas was a... An outstanding linebacker as a freshman last year before he was injured later in the season, but was still uh, voted the outstanding uh, freshman player, uh, All-American freshman the team that they have. A true freshman. Not many true freshmen play major college football, but Cross is something special. Particularly at Iowa. Third down, and it's about 12 now for Tennessee after the penalty. Down the middle, the ball goes to Anthony Miller. Miller's short of the first down. As the Hawkeyes round him up at midfield. And Tennessee will look at fourth down, and they'll have to punt it. And again, it's Brad Quas on the tackle for Iowa. All right now, the Hawks are going to get the ball back. And it's been pretty much a passing game so far. Do you, is there any particular reason why you feel that Hayden has, uh, has gone to the pass so much early on? I don't think he's trying to protect McGuire at all. I think he's doing what he has to do uh, best. Some pressure there, but uh, Garmin gets it out. Good kick. But it takes uh, an Iowa bounce and goes on to the end zone and will be a touchback. So a 50-yard punt, no return on it. Iowa gets the ball back. First down at their own 20 with a minute and 48 seconds to go in the first quarter. On Monday night, September 7th, on ABC's College Football, we open our regular season with a primetime special, 8 Eastern time. Big Ten, Pac-10 matchup, the USC Trojans under new coach Larry Smith going into Michigan State against George Perlis Spartan. Of course, Michigan State led by a healthy Heisman candidate, Lorenzo White. at 8 Eastern time, Monday night here on ABC, September 7th. Quinn Early goes wide for the Hawkeyes, and they'll throw it on first down. Wanted to go deep with it, but uh, Tennessee pressure finally chases McGuire out of the pocket. The pocket broke down. And there's a loss on the play of a yard or so. Tracy Hayworth, who is an outside backer, another sophomore from Tennessee, in to make the play. Now we're going to see Rick Bayless for the first time in the ball game at tailback. Iowa so far has run for only seven yards. They have thrown for 67. Bayless was an outstanding player for Iowa last year. Made the All-Big Ten team, led this team in catching and rushing and was their most valuable player filling in for Harmon. He's got it. But the play was slow to develop. McGuire had a little trouble coming away from the snap then has seemingly had a bit of a delay in getting the ball to Bayless and he'll move it up just over the 20. So they're at third and long as Cedric Klein. Strong safety made the hit. Well, Klein was the first one into the backfield as we uh, again see this blitzing, stunning, aggressive, attacking style of defense that, that Tennessee is employing. Hit him in the backfield but didn't bring him down, but uh, it's got to be a concern. 
for Iowa, the, this aggressive style of defense. Of course, you can burn it if you can block it. Third and nine. Bayless with the ball. And Rick from Hugo, Minnesota, will get it up to the 25, and the Hawkeyes will have to punt. Mark Adams is one of those scheduled to do the punting. The time ticking down. They may wait till the end of the quarter and have time to talk and lead the second quarter with the punt, and that's what they'll do. Time has run out after one quarter of play. Giant Stadium, the Meadowlands, the fifth kickoff classic, Iowa leads Tennessee three to nothing. Three nothing, Iowa leads Tennessee in the fifth kickoff classic at Giant Stadium in the Meadowlands. Iowa about to punt the ball away. We'll pause here five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. Keith Jackson, Bob Greasy, Mike Adamley, ABC Sports, and Mark Adams is out to do the punting now. He led the nation, junior college nation, in punting last year, 45-7. He transferred from Eastern Utah Junior College. Gets it out, didn't get all of it, got some pressure. And it takes a Tennessee bounce, but it is very quickly covered by a pursuing Hawkeye, and Tennessee will have the ball in good field position, and let's join Mike Adamley. Keith, one of the interested observers in today's kickoff classic between Iowa and Tennessee, Clemson head football coach Danny Ford. Danny, must be nice not having to wear the headsets on a sideline and enjoying yourself a little bit. Very beautiful day here, and uh, two very fine football uh, teams playing, and we're really enjoying it because we open up next week. What have you thought so far of young McGuire, quarterback? He threw the devil out of a while ago, about 60 yards, and they're trying to pressure me, doing very well. I think it's a very good football game. Okay, thanks for stopping by. Enjoy the game. Got a pretty good team building down at Clemson, too. A lot of folks think that's a team that could be in the top ten, if not the top five this year. Danny Ford, one of Bears' boys. On first down, the Volunteers run it as Francis gives it to William Howard, and Howard just blows right in behind Bruin, Galbraith, and Kirk, and he picks up three yards, second down and seven. Clemson's got Georgia and Georgia Tech both, I think, in at Clemson this year. So uh, I, I really look for the Tigers to be tough. I really do. From midfield. Francis gives it to Howard. A couple of yards. And so they're now at third and about six. Joe Mott, a senior out of Indicott, New York, makes the stop for Iowa. Hawkeyes get them from both coasts. Now they go double wide left with Cleveland and Miller. Cleveland in motion. Francis. A lot of time. Zips it good. First down, Tennessee at the Iowa. 33. Caught by Alvin Harper, who was inside at the wingback position. And Alvin is a redshirt freshman out of one of the more colorful communities of the state of Florida. Frostproof. <laughs> and he is something special. As you say, he's a redshirt freshman, but he's not going to get a lot of playing time. Right there in the middle of your screen, just a curl. He's 6'5". And he's a pretty good ball player. A lot of times, Tennessee will go with three wide receivers, maybe 60% of the time during the ball game. First down, call it, well, it's just inside the 34. Run and run it. Big guy Howard to the 30. That is the first first down for the Volunteers, incidentally, since they opened the game with their first possession. Iowa was threatening to take control of the ball game, but not much scoring so far. 3-0, Hawkeyes. We see Doug Matthews signaling in the plays. He gets them from upstairs. Walt Harris, the offensive coordinator, calls the plays for the Volunteers. Ball's at the 32 of Iowa. Well, they're, they're grinding it out with the big back, Howard. And he'll move it down near the 28 for a pickup of about four on that carry. We talked a little earlier about Quas. Watch as he fills the hole and makes the tackle. Mr. Southmore, the man that we said last year, played a lot. 
Doesn't get blocked. I get puck, number 32, the linebacker that didn't get blocked. Why are you blocking me? He's the guy that gets all the publicity. <laughs> Third down and a long four. And no throw. Pass is good. First down, Keith Davis. Davis to the 10. Inside the 10, first and goal volunteers. That's the tailback catching that one. You get preoccupied with those wide receivers and they'll burn you out of the backfield. Take a look at it from field level as Hate 64 is kept out of there. Everything seems to be uh, knocked up into the middle of the field. Grant is kind of slingshots that. You saw him looking downfield straight at us. He wanted to throw the ball downfield. Davis was an outlet and a pretty good one. It's at the nine, first and goal. Roland Poles is in the backfield for Tennessee. Redshirt freshman from Caledonia, New York. And carrying it is Reggie Cobb. And Cobb will get down around the five. There was another sidearm pass completed here last night in the stadium when the Jets and Giants played each other by another Tennessee quarterback, Ben Ryan. Take a look at this, Keith. This is Galbraith, the All-American. Watch as he comes across and traps on the play. A nice big hole. Galbraith coming around. Leading up on puck number 32 and really stuffing him into the ground. And they've got the ball at the Iowa three. Second down and goal. Wilson is in the backfield. Number 32. He's in motion. Ball is pitched to Reggie Cobb to the one. And it'll be third and goal. Well, we're getting some pretty good jawboning down there in the trenches right now. It's a pretty good ball game, team For this early in the year, you really don't know what to expect. It's still August. Johnny Majors has his team up here. He said the offenses may have to carry us for a while. Both teams are playing very well. Very few mistakes. Charles Wilson, William Howard, Roland Poles. They'll work out of the power eye now. Now they got Wilson up there in that wingback slot. But they'll probably motion him back, and they do. And he pitched to the deep man, Cobb. He dives. He's got it. Touchdown, Tennessee. Howard it is. William Howard, number 35. Well, again, there is the value of having a guy like Howard around because he played both, both fullback and the tailback, and this time he lined up a tailback. Watch the block this man makes over here as Cobb takes the pitch and just comes over. There's really no suspense in who's going to get the ball. Just a tough man gets into the end zone last year, as we said, was one of the leading scorers in the nation. Bill Rich for the extra point. And it's good. Hit it on the nose out of Lee England cold, and so we are at 10 9 to go in the first half, and Tennessee goes to the lead 7 to 3. There's big William Howard, the power man in the goal line territory for Tennessee, sticking it in the end zone. The Volunteers take the lead 7 to 3, and Tennessee will kick it off. Phil Rich do the kicking, and they're two men deep for Iowa. Peter Marciano, 26, and Kevin Harmon. Howard and Quinn was Early. Quinn, uh, Quinn Early. No, Marciano's not back there on the kickoff. It is Harmon and Early. Excuse me, Keith. I was just going to say that Howard was in the doghouse, Johnny Major's doghouse, when he came back for practice this summer. He didn't seem to have the intensity. He wasn't uh, in the best of shape, so they dropped him from first team to fourth team very quickly, and... Uh, it has a way, though, when the games start, that if, even if you don't start the game, it gets in there pretty quick and does make a, an impact on the game. Chuck Hartley is warming up on the sidelines for Iowa. We might well see him now at quarterback because Hayden uh, wants to play all three quarterbacks, the other one being Tom Poholsky, who started four games for Iowa last year. They've gone out and looked at the tee for some reason. It does look like it's setting up a bit, doesn't it? A little bit more than I'm used to seeing. <laughs> All right, here's the kick. Taken short by Grant Goodman, who started today at fullback, and Goodman shows some quickness as he bolts up across the 30 to about the 32 or 3. And Darren Miller brought him down for Tennessee. So the Hawkeyes will get good field position now, and let's see who goes out there at quarterback. It'll be McGuire. 
And you got Bayless now in their tailback for Iowa. And Goodman stays in at fullback. So it's Bayless and Goodman. Back to throw it. Got a man on the sidelines early. Pass is caught for a first down up near midfield. Mark him at the 49. Take a look at the play. I'm impressed with McGuire's footwork. He seems to get along fine as early at the top of your screen. Peppers is playing off, giving him a little bit too much cushion, but he gets back and knocks him out of bounds. A good reaction by Peppers, but I'm impressed with McGuire. He seems to be doing everything that uh, Hayden Fry uh, said he could do. Early has caught four passes now for six to nine yards for Iowa. Want to throw it again. Goes underneath to the fullback, Goodman, and Goodman will pick up two yards as Tennessee again recovers very quickly. Brian Kimbrell, 55, Cedric Klein, 30. That Klein is, uh, he's showing up a lot. Certainly is, and he's very active. He is a uh, strong safety in that defense, and a lot of times with an attacking style of defense, such as Tennessee, the strong safety will be blitzing quite a bit of the time. Second down. Bayless is out, on a throw to the sidelines for the tight end, and it's just a bit too long. Diving for the ball was Mike Flagg, but despite his 6'6 height, he could not reach that one. The yardage that Iowa is making, Keith, they're making through the air on the arm of McGuire, and I'm impressed that when he does miss the receiver, it's, he's missing it on the safe side. He's overthrowing it out of bounds, throwing it away from the defense if he's gonna miss it. Third and eight now. 9-11 to play in the first half. 7-3, Tennessee lead. Bayless back in. McGuire has a ton of time, gets it off to early, tipped away. Incomplete, and that's the play for Peppers. Victor Peppers, 5-8, got in front that time and showed how high he can fly. This is uh, an ill-advised throw for a quarterback if you want to stay friendly with your receivers. He kind of hangs it up there. You see the safety coming to the right. Peppers makes the play, but Days gets <laughs> the hit. And I'm sure that uh, Quinn Early is going to go back and say, hey, try to throw that ball a little bit quicker and get it to me before the safety does. Here's the punt by Mark Adams. Has trouble, but gets it away. Hitting it for the corner, and it's going to be a good one. It's out of bounds at the two. So they kill it at the two-yard line as Mark Mazzari, a wide receiver, was down in front of the ball and knocked it out of bounds. A 47-yard punt and a good one. It's inside the two-yard line. All right, now Tennessee is going to start. The ball is just in between the one and two-yard hash marks. They're calling it officially the one. 8.53 to go. They lead 7-3. to three. Let's see if they try to grind it out of here or if they try to have a little foot race early. Well, they've got three wide receivers in the game. Up. Handed inside to William Howard, and Howard gets it near the five. They'll mark him on the floor, pick up a three. Walt Harris, the, deep, the offensive coordinator for the Volunteers, was telling me yesterday that probably the fifth or sixth series of the game that they planned on putting their entire second offensive unit in the ball game. And you got Cobb and Howard now as the setback. Keep it on the ground. And get it out around the six or seven as Cobb that time was your tailback and carried. And Joe Schuster will get his fourth tackle of the game. This is no area of the field, though, to be putting your second teamers in uh, on your one on your one yard line. You'd rather get them some good field position. And so we may see that a little bit later. Tennessee's five out of eight on third down conversion, and they have widened the field now. 
with their wide up. And you had some contact. Iowa, of course, uh, Dave Haight saying he moved. He lured me into the contact. It's up to the man in the striped shirt to figure out who was responsible. I think what happened, Keith, was the center snapped the ball when Haight jumped offside. It was, it was real early before the snap count was supposed to be snapped, but when the when the center saw that Haight was offside, he snapped the football. We have no play. The defense moved into the neutral zone. The offensive man moved back. It's no play. Third down. Well, I don't well, see how you can have a no play out of that, but, but you saw... Watch when the ball is, watch when he jumps offside. Now he's going to snap the ball. See, nobody else moves on offense. So the center, Anderson, just did it on, I mean, Kirk did it on himself. And uh, if he was offside, it would be offside. To me. Davis and Howard, the setback. Francis going to throw it out of his end zone. Better hurry. Is that ball loose? It is going to be called a fumble. The beanbag goes down. Iowa has the football. Myron Kepi covered it in the end zone. It was Mike Burke that came from the backside and made the hit. Big Mike Burke, number five. And Kepi, number 77, covered it. So the Hawkeyes make a break for themselves. Let's take another look. The quarterback's arm has to be coming forward for it to be a pass. The ruling was it was not a pass. And it's a good ruling. He was just raising his arm. He was not bringing it forward. It's a good call as we look from behind. When you're a quarterback throwing out of your own end zone, you cannot be too selective. You've got to get rid of the ball. His arm was coming up, but not going forward. Chuck good Hartley call. is in at quarterback now for Iowa. The Hawkeyes came quarterback Chuck Hartley goes in gives the ball to Bayless Bayless dies and gets stuffed by Keith DeLong an inside linebacker for Tennessee the ball was put down outside the one close to the two they now mark him at the one we talk about the Tennessee uh, team putting their second quarterback in unit in if I were going to be the second team quarterback in unit this is where I'd want to start on the other team's one yard line right. going in uh, Hartley this uh, I'm sure they were standing over there raising their hands. Uh, the second and third string quarterback for Hayden Fry. Hey, coach, I'll take over now. Let me go. Hard leave a senior out of Woodstock, Illinois. Hudson and Marshall Clatton in the backfield now. And they hand it off inside to Bayless. And Tennessee has held him short of the goal line. Volunteers are really closing down inside. One of the unusual things that Iowa does is their two tight ends stand up on the line of scrimmage. But it's hard to block this way. Let's watch the one on the right side and see if he gets his block. He gets stuffed into the backfield and the runner is stuffed also. I, I kind of like it in some, time, in some uh, situations on the field, but on the goal line, I think I'd have him down there in a field. Well, the basic yeah. strength of the offensive line for Iowa would be their two tackles, right? Two tackles and their tight ends. Yep. But it's tough to get a block on the goal line from a standing position when that linebacker's trying to Third and goal. Hartley throws it. Knocked down by number 49, Kelly Ziegler. It is fourth down. It was intended for the tight end, Cook. But Ziegler was right there. Play action fake on third down. Maybe on first or second it would have helped hold Ziegler, but Ziegler gets up. Two times earlier in the game, Hayden Fry went on fourth and one. He's 50-50. He's going to go again here right now. Tennessee's defense is really holding their backs up to the wall. Hartley keeps it. Throws it out, it's intercepted! The ball is picked off by Tennessee linebacker. It is Darren Miller running as hard as he can. Slow, he's puffing, the aches and pains are coming, he's diving for the corner. He's got a touchdown! talk about a 
cruncher. It was fourth and goal from the one. Hartley option down the line, tried to pitch it back, and the ball is intercepted by Darren Miller, a linebacker. First and goal from the one. They couldn't get in. The Tennessee defense, you got to give them all the credit as Hartley was tackled at the last minute, said, let me get the ball back to the tailback. And Miller was really waiting for somebody to catch him. He was good for 50 yards, and after that, he says, when are they going to catch me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was puffin' and puffin'. It'll go down as a 96-yard interception return. Bill Rich kicks it. Good. I think they ought to give old Darren the rest of the day <laughs> off. <haven't> <laughs> <laughs> give him some ox oxygen. <laughs> Here's the play again as Hartlett right here is going to come down the line of scrimmage. The ball would be pitched back here. The defensive man is going to hit Hartlett first. Another defensive defender, uh, Miller, is going to come in and make the play. Right there he's hit. Miller sees it all the way, and then he's off to the races. All right, what am I going to get caught? I I'm not this fast. Somebody's got to be getting close. Again, right, I'm though, I'm Bob. Guess. You know, team speed shows up here, too, doesn't it? But the way they reacted to it, and we're able to get on downfield and help it. That's right. So, a big turnaround on that one. 14 to 3 ball. A huge turnaround in the ball game. Iowa had it first and goal just outside the one. They wind up. Tennessee getting a 96-yard intercepted fumble for a touchdown run from linebacker Darren Miller. And they lead 14 to 3 with 5 minutes and 46 seconds to play in the first half. Frankly, I thought it was a poor decision on Hartley to try to lob the ball out like that. That was his first series in the game, and he wasn't uh, really into the game. You think that if you're ever a safe place to put in your backup, it's on the one yard line, but I don't know. You, you, hindsight is always 20 20, I guess. Yep. A low spinning kick going toward the sideline and will go out of bounds, and that'll cost them five, and they'll bring it back. The momentum of the game certainly has changed from from the, the uh, Iowa defense turning the ball over on Francis getting the fumble on the one yard line to giving up a touchdown for Tennessee. That's a 14 point swing. Incidentally, while they're bringing the ball back, one of a dear old friend. I mean, they just don't make him any better. Scoop Hudgens, who has a million friends all over this country, is having a hard time of it right now. Scoop has had some surgery and is in St. Thomas Hospital in, Hospital in Nashville, and we wish him well. I just heard about it a few hours ago. But Scoop Hudgens, who for so many years was with the Southeastern Conference as its public relations director, is having a bit of a hard time. So I hope all his friends, and there are just millions of them around the country, will take time to give him a ring. 14 to three ball game now. From the 30, Rich will kick it off. Bouncing downfield, hard to handle sometimes down there. Picked up by Kevin Harmon, and Harmon's picked up by the Volunteers at about the 29-yard line. Brought down by Andre Kramer. ABC's NFL preseason action continues tomorrow at 8 Eastern time. The St. Louis Cardinals and the Chicago Bears. And then following Nightline, ABC Sports presents Monday Sports Night. Heisman Trophy candidate Gordy Lockbaum. Who's the uh, crusader, or he's a symbol of the uh, smaller schools in the pursuit of that trophy, will be with Al Troutwig. Little delay, handed off uh, to Richard Bass, junior out of Omaha, coming around. And he'll pick up three, second down and seven. There's Darren Miller, the linebacker who goes in the books with a 96-yard intercepted fumble. Miller was an inside linebacker last year, and because of the graduation, was moved to the outside and uh, certainly is playing very well there today. He showed some moves. He's <laughs> evading tacklers. <laughs> and he, I'm sure he expected to be crunched any time. On second and seven, Hartley back to throw it. Pumps it once, goes underneath with it to Bass. And Bass breaks out of the pack, but will be short of the first down. Marion Hobby, the defensive right tackle, a sophomore from Irondale, Alabama, made that tackle for Tennessee. 
whatever yardage Iowa has picked up today has been through the air. They have uh, 13 rushes for 12 yards. Travis Watkins appears in the game now. Wide receiver, 6'1", 180. He's a sophomore, also from Claremont, California, where McGuire came from. They're going to be short of the first down, looks like. And it depends on the mark. Bass carried. Line judge is standing right on the 40. That's where the marker is, so it just depends on where the ball winds up, whether he's a right-footed or a left-footed marker. Maybe just a fraction short. No, it isn't. They got the first down. See, some people may question changing quarterbacks. I don't think it's I don't think it's that as we take a look at McGuire on the phones, I don't think it's as important in college as it might be in pros. I think they're the pro players, the offensive players might be more accustomed to having that one guy in there. I think colleges are a little bit different, and I think they're gonna react to whoever is under the center. First down from the 40 for the Hawkeyes. Two tight ends now, Flag and Cook in the lineup. You see both of them standing erect. And Hartley looking to throw it. Early's on this side. The pass is too high. He had to leave his feet. Made a one-handed grab of it, but fell out of bounds. Harry McDaniel, the cornerback on that side, was with him, but the pass was too high. 3.50 to go in the first half. American League Baseball scores. Seattle and New York playing. Uh, Seattle giving uh, New York a hard time right now. Oakland uh, leading Toronto 3-2. Texas is scored it later. American, uh, in fact, both leagues look like they're going to take their pennant battles right down to the last week, the way things are going. Boston over Cleveland early on, 4 nothing. Second down and 10 with Bass and Harmon now in the backfield for Iowa. Hart lead throwing. Missed him. He gave him a big chase, but missed him, and he turns it upfield and is very close to a first down. That was Tracy Hayworth, who had looped outside, an outside backer, and he couldn't quite run him down. Well, one of the things that we were told, one of the things that we were told about Hartley is that he is more mobile than the other one. Take a look here. Watch the defensive lineman. This one here, Hayworth, will come to the inside, a little game or twist as the two defensive linemen crisscross, and the man coming to the inside gets all the attention, forcing him out of the pocket. But Hartlett is very mobile. That is the longest Iowa rush of the ball game, incidentally. Good for nine yards, and as they go for the first down, give it to Kevin Harmon. And Kevin, a 200-pounder, is hit by Kelly Ziegler, but he will have the first down as Jeff Francis watches from the sideline. He's accounted for one. Touchdown, but the defense bailed him out on the other one. He's probably going over to Darren Miller and saying, yeah, you score anytime you can. <laughs> I'll hold the door for you. <laughs> can I carry your bag? First down, ball near the Tennessee 48. Hartley, a little quick pop, batted down. And that's Tracy Hayworth, I believe it. Getting in and getting the hand on the ball. The problem here is the offensive lineman. This is a three-step drop, a short, quick pass. The lineman there, Wester, 73, has got to keep contact. If you don't keep contact, the defensive man can jump in the air and block it. Go defense! Second down and 10. There's that little inside flip. Goes to Kevin Harmon. Harmon dancing for a first down and gets on the sidelines for a lot more. They don't get him out of bounds until he is at the Tennessee 26. Fine run by Kevin Harmon. And that little shovel pass that Jack Curtis made to famous out at Utah. Johnny Major's concerned about his defense. This is a smooth looking play as you take a look. Right here, just a little flip. Harmon really just Gets his legs out of the way. Now he moves so effortlessly. He just gets around some quick defensive backs. Big play for Iowa. That incidentally goes as a forward pass for Hartley. 
First down now from the Tennessee 26 for Iowa. And inside, Richard Bass carries. He stands only 5'9", but he carries 225 pounds. And he's got the better part of three yards on that carry. McGuire, incidentally, while he was in the ball game, wound up seven out of 14 for 85 yards. He's in for four series, Keith. The first one he had the ball 13 plays and got a field goal. The next three series were punts. Pressure on Hartley. Gives it away inside and carrying Kevin Harmon, and Kevin's got a touchdown. They were going after the quarterback. Harmon found some daylight in the middle. The Hawkeyes blocked it beautifully, and they put six on the board. Well, if a play works one way, why not call it again and go the other way? Hayden Fry calls the plays on the sideline. The old quarterback now watching. He's going to drop straight back. Harmon is to his left. A little flip forward. This is the same identical play they just ran the other way. And it's nice to pick up some passing yards with a sh little short flip to a guy that can run with the ball after he gets it. That'll go in the books as a 23-yard pass play. The conversion is good by Hoffman, and the Hawkeyes are back in the ball game. With one minute and 36 seconds to play in the first half, it's now 14 to 10. Mazda presenting the kickoff classic from Giant Stadium in the Meadowlands, 14 to 10. Tennessee leads. Iowa goes 70 yards, 10 plays in four minutes and 10 seconds. Let's tighten the thing up. So Hartley, in this first series, failed miserably, but comes right back and directs. Of course, they went to a little different kind of an offensive uh, arrangement, too. Very true. Some safe passes. Yep. And give credit to Hayden Fry, the guy calling the plays. You know, Hartlett uh, was not throwing the ball downfield so well, going into the quick uh, uh, passing as we look at New York and the World Trade Center. A clear day. Beautiful day, as a matter of fact, here in the Meadowlands and Giant Stadium. But, but Hayden Fry doing what he has to do. He said he'd be innovative. We got to a few surprises. And as advertised, the offenses are dominating, except for <laughs> Darren, Darren Miller. You couldn't yeah, tell him that. No, hey, wait a minute. Where about my touchdown run? <laughs> <laughs> there are the numbers as their scoring play will go down as a pass play, even though the pass actually covered no more than three yards behind the line of scrimmage. A little flip. But that also worked because Tennessee was really blowing into the outside. They had five people coming. And all five are coming from the corner. Well, that's when you use that play. Yep. When you got a lot of pressure upfield and you get a, a, the lineman blocking the hard rushing defensive lineman out of the way, you flip it. Good call by Hayden. Anthony Miller is the deep man now for Tennessee as George Murphy will kick it off. He gets it up well. From the seventh. And follows his blocking up near the 33, maybe the 34. Coming up next here on ABC Sports, the 87th U.S. Amateur Golf Championship, Eric Repman and Bill Mayfair playing in the match play final round at Jupiter, Florida. 4.30 Eastern Time, 3.30 Central, and 1.30 on the other side of the big mountain. We're now at a minute and a half as Tennessee gets the ball, and they mark him on the 32. Charles Wilson, the long remaining back. Jeff Francis, the quarterback. On a throw. Batted in the air. Caught by a Tennessee man. Iowa man slapped it up. Tennessee man diving for it. And they're going to call it no catch. Dave Haight is the man who got his hand on it. Hate 64, not getting much depth into the. Now watch, he's going to stand there and just watch, time it. That's what you call a quick release. Francis did not show a quick release. Quick release is from the time you decide to throw the ball to the time it passes the defensive lineman. That time it was uh, not very quick. Guard Jeff Bruin almost made the reception. Second down and ten. Sideline Wilson. He was off balance. 
and couldn't pull it in. Timeout remaining. Tennessee has all three. Iowa two. And time, one minute, 18 seconds. It begins to appear, Bob, that the Iowa defensive front, that is, Kathy Hate, Schuster, may be okay, gaining a little bit of an edge up there now. Tennessee offense, uh, you know, a very explosive offense, really has not gotten on track. Maybe due to that uh, Iowa big defensive front. Well, there's a sample of it. Now, that's just hand fighting your way in. Keppy, 77, took a shot at him. But Haight and Schuster were just gaining uh, slowly but surely and getting right in his face. Well, you got to give credit to the defensive secondary for that one. They yep. had him covered. 108 to play in the first half. 14 10, Tennessee leads timeout. Bob Garman is out to punt, third kick of the day. First two good ones, 46 and 50. Deep man for Iowa, Peter Marciano. Iowa now got eight men up front as they drop two off the block. No pressure on Garman, spins it out of there. Pretty good kick, going to be a tail dragger and take a Tennessee bounce. And go out of bounds down at the 11-yard line. Not too bad. Time rolled off on the rolling ball to 58 seconds. That's a 57-yard punt. That's the longest of his career. That's why you like to see the punt returner get up there and fair catch that ball. He gained about 25 yards on the roll. This telecast of the 1987 kickoff classic being produced in association with Raycom Sports. And Iowa now will get the ball just beyond their own 10 with only 58 seconds to play. Iowa called that last time out, and why wouldn't they? Because it was to their advantage to stop the clock because they knew they were going to get the ball back. They may have different thoughts now being backed up in the deep in their own territory. The quarterback is Chuck Hartley. Harmon and Hudson behind him, and that ball goes to Harmon. And Harmon backed up just about the line of scrimmage. Now it is Tennessee calling timeout. Remember, the volunteers have three to spend. And uh, the clock, uh, the scoreboard clock here at least, is still running. I, Johnny Majors was signaling for the timeout, and apparently uh, that message didn't reach the field until they had burned about four seconds. This afternoon's game brought to you by Mazda Cars and Trucks. The more you look, the more you like Mazda value. And in part by the people of Rockwell International, where science gets down to business. And by Strohs and Strolite. Now you're talking good times and Strohs is spoken here. And by Brute, quality men's fragrance and toiletry. Brute, it smells like a man. The instructions in the Tennessee huddle is if there's a pile up and uh, get up and call timeout immediately unless they make a first down or complete a pass. So Tennessee wants to stop the clock if they can uh, get a punt by uh, Iowa, but if they're making first downs, we don't want to help them down the field. And I'm sure the instructions from Hayden Fry to Hartley were let's just keep it down, do some safe things, don't give the ball away, and uh, try to make a first down and go into a halftime only down 14 to 10. Harmon and Hudson are in the backfield. Now he's going to throw it as far as he can to the other side of the field. And the pass is caught over there and caught at the 28-yard line by Quinn Early, who is having a big day. But that, whoa, we could that blow up in your face. Oh, boy, throwing the ball that far across field with the speed that Tennessee has in their secondary. Hartley rolls to the right. Now, he's not even going to look to the right. He, this is a planned throwback all the way. But if a volunteer would have cut in front of that, there was nobody over there to pick it off. But as it turned out, I was out of the hole. Early just simply out jumped Peppers on that play. That's a little swing pass out to Hudson. Hudson isn't going anywhere. He's going to lose uh, about two and a half, three yards. And now Iowa spends its last time out with 11 seconds to play in the first half. Cooper 77 is right there on Hartley. He held it as long as he could. Cooper is a huge man, 6'5 and 285. Had some 
problems. He was in Major's doghouse uh, in the spring. In fact, was off the team and has come back. Uh, and they need him, quite frankly, with the injuries to uh, Hunt and Hovannik. Hovannik, one of their top players, their leading sacker of last year. They're a little bit thin on that defensive line, and uh, they need the help that Cooper could give them. Well, as you said, he's a huge man, 6'5", 285. And it's one of those uh, kind of opponents that you're always very nice to, I would think. <laughs> no, I always was. Defensive lineman, I always said, yes, sir, yes, sir. <laughs> Neither of these uh, two teams impacted by the big agent to do that's been going on of late. Uh, Ronnie Harmon, the older brother of uh, Kevin Harmon at one time apparently was involved, but uh, he's now with the Buffalo Bills. But nobody on these two teams uh, involved going into the season. And Ohio State, in case you missed it, decided not to appeal the Chris Carter case. Uh, his career's done at Ohio State. Hartley's going to throw it on second down in about 12. Goes long down the middle for the tight end. He's got his first down on the Tennessee 44. That stops the clock with three picks remaining. And the only thing you can do now is uh, hurry up and go the Hail Mary route. Go it deep. No time to get your kicking unit on the field. Well, he's got time, and he's going big, and he throws for Cook, the tight end, and it is incomplete, and the half is over. So after the first 30 minutes, the Tennessee Volunteers lead the Iowa Hawkeyes by a score of 14 to 10 as Mazda presents the kickoff classic from Giant Stadium. All right, Tennessee ready to kick it to Iowa. Quinn Early is back there. With Peter Marciano, uh, Kevin Harmon, and Kevin Harmon picks it up and comes up field with it and gets a good return out of it. And Grant Goodman, the fullback, who was the short man in the receiving alignment, uh, threw a big block to spring him out past the 25 to the 27. And it'll be Chuck Hartley at quarterback for Iowa starting the third quarter, trailing by four points as Mazda presents the fifth annual kickoff classic. Harmon now is coming off the field for Iowa. Dave Hudson is the lone remaining back now as Quinn Early comes to a wide position. And here's the first snap of the second half. Hartley throwing to the sideline to Morrow, his first pass. Jim Morrow, the senior out of Des Moines. Pulls it in over his left shoulder, and again, the ball was well thrown. It was thrown to the outside, away from the defender. Morrow was the leading receiver. He tied with uh, Bayless last year on the ball club. He's more of a possession-style receiver. Not to say he doesn't have B, but he's just not a burner like uh, early on the other side is. Second down, about two and a half from the 35 for the Hawkeyes. Interesting that Iowa comes out, starts the second half with a two tight end offense. Give it a big day to Hudson. Hudson wiggling over the right side behind Alexander and Wester, and he will have a first down as he comes up near the 44 45 yard line. This is part of the cat and mouse game that you play. Uh, Hayden Fry coming out, showing something entirely different offensively at the start of the second half. Tennessee was probably talking about what, what Iowa was doing offensively trying to react to that, and now Fry changes the, the tempo of the game again by going to different formations. Call it the 45. Good protection. Morrow passes a little high, and he was hanging out on the sidelines and got clotheslined by Cedric Klein. Well, he's and he's down. not up either. Good protection, as you can see. This is a double zone. There's two deep, and the safety, Klein, has good vision. This ball has got to be thrown a lot quicker and a lot flatter and get there a lot quicker to get it in there. You can play that kind of style of defense when you've got speed at that position, and Klein has the speed. They are working on Morrow on the sidelines, and it looks like they're working on a leg. But he took a wicked lick. 
from uh, Cedric Klein. Klein at that strong safety, six feet, 200 pounds, a sophomore from Loudoun, Tennessee. Hayden's going across the field now to see how badly the injured uh, Morrow is. Trainers have been with him for some time. So we've got a timeout early on here in the third quarter. Jim Morrow got up, walked across the field, but it's his right ankle that appears to be the problem. He's out of the ball game. Time is back in. We're ready to go. Second down and 10. The football is resting at the 45-yard line. Hawkeyes own it on their own side of the field. Mark Missouri has gone in now at the wide receiver spot, replacing Morrow. Fake right, hand it back the other way, give it to Hudson. And Hudson, a uh, strong man, it took a bunch to bring him down. He picked up at least five. Keith DeLong and Cedric Klein finally were the two who wrestled him down. Hudson is a, is a big man, as you mentioned, Keith, and uh, Fry is very high on him. He's uh, just a junior, but uh, block well, he can run well, he's, uh, he's a big fullback. He, uh, he catches the ball well. They're pretty high on him. He gained about six yards on that carry, so call it third down and four. And look at Tennessee. They got eight people up front. Now they peel off as Hartley drops the throw, goes down the middle, and he won't get that one. Gwen Early was sandwiched. Number 39, Kelly Days, and number eight, Victor Pepper. I thought they might come away with that one. Well, he was open as it appears that Days has an injury. Is down on the field. That ball was just in the air too long, but it's allowed Days and Klein to get there. They're going thrown a little bit harder. I think it's been completed. Let's take another look from the end zone. See the defensive lineman forces him to throw. He has to throw it over the linebacker. That's a tough throw right there. Yeah, and he took the defensive man down right on top of him. I think this is more a deflation than an injury. They pump him up a little bit. He'd probably be all right. But uh, that was a pretty good fair size collision on that play. Kelly's up and about now. He'll leave the game, however, and that probably will bring in Chris Treese. Punt receiving team is now on the field for Tennessee. Terrence Cleveland is the deep man and Mark Adams to do the punting and they send everybody to send 10 people but and the pressure causes Adams to shank it but in good luck his shank rolls all the way down and out of bounds at the 15 yard line 34 yard punt and no return and coming up next ABC Sports offers the 87th U.S. Amateur Golf Championship Bill Mayfair and Eric Repman from Jupiter Florida 430 Eastern Time. So Tennessee will start now from their own 15. We're at 13 minutes and 21 seconds to go in the third quarter in the 14 to 10 ball game of the Vols leading. Davis and Wilson are in the eye. Francis has still got it. Kate Sapson passes away, passes intercepted. It is picked off by Kerry Burt. Strong safety, senior out of Waterloo. Well, give uh, give Big Dave Hate some credit here because he was breathing down the neck of Francis when he got the ball away. Play action fake, holds the linebackers initially. Francis then moves to his uh, his right, never sees Burke. Burke comes from our left, comes back into the picture, and he never saw him. The ball would have been completed to Cleveland. But a big play by Burke. And I was in business now at the Tennessee 33 yard line. First down with Kevin Harmon, the eye back. And Harmon's got it. And dives across the 30. Morrow is on his way to the clubhouse. Mike Adam Lee has a story on it. They are taking the senior wide receiver to the locker room, as you mentioned, for x rays. They think that he has possibly a broken uh, right leg. You can see it, uh, that he's got crutches. They're worried that maybe the fibula bone is broken. So they're finding out now with uh, a set of x-rays for Jimmy Morrow. Oh, that's bad news for Jimmy. Second down, seven. Richard Bass is in the backfield. Hartley rolls it out. 
Passes away to Early on the sidelines, and Early making the catch steps out of bounds at the 17. Terry McDaniel getting some action on his side of the field now. The partial rollout, I think this, uh, the way Hartleb is playing kind of tells you the confidence that Fry has as you see one foot clearly in bounds, and that's all you need in college. Good play, good execution by the Hawkeyes. That's six catches now for Quinn Early and even 100 yards. So he's having a big day. Hawkeyes first down, Tennessee 17. This is Kevin Harmon to about the 13. The Iowa offensive front now beginning to get a pretty good surge, too. Those are the little things that go with uh, the sum total at the end of four quarters. Remember, the, uh, they'll mark it on the 14-yard line and three yards. Remember the old USC theory of years ago and Johnny McKay and the student body right and left is two yards first quarter, four yards second quarter, eight yards third, and <laughs> touchdown the fourth quarter. The big, strong people, they just keep hammering on you. Well, Johnny Major said before the game he was concerned about their size and strength. This is Kevin Harmon trying to go outside. Tennessee won't buy it, and they wrap him up back on the 20. Keith DeLong and Terry McDaniel, the leader on that defensive effort. The trademark of a Tennessee defense is not the big, strong uh, defensive player, but more quickness. And if you run laterally, they're liable to run it down. But if you run straight at them, Iowa's had success at doing that here today. That loss is six yards from the 14 back to the 20. Now it is third down and 13. Three wide receivers for Iowa. Hart leads pass is caught by Quinn Early. Quinn Early is caught at the 10 yard line by Andre Kramer. And it's gonna bring up a fourth down for the Hawkeyes. Chuck had some zip on that pass to the sideline. I'm line. impressed with this young man. Um, you know, it's got to be tough for Fry to take him out and then go to Paholsky. But Paholsky, coming into this year, was the only one of three quarterbacks that had ever started a game. Rob Hoplin is in the ball game on fourth down. Outstanding place kicker. Hartley is the holder. He has a 27-yard field goal today. And this one is popped through there. 42-yard field goal, I should say. This one, 27. And at 10 minutes and 56 seconds to go in the third quarter, it is now a one-point lead for Tennessee. Bob, I have an interesting little item, I, I think, here that uh, makes some sense. Nine of the 10 Iowa possessions have moved into Tennessee territory. Nine of 10, but they have produced only 13 points. What does that tell you? It tells me that it's the first game of the year and they're not yep. finishing off what they start. Right. That's right. The uh, left jab's working all right, but the right cross hasn't come into play yet. Can't put him away. No. Nope. <laughs> all right, George Murphy's going to tee it up and kick it down the field and waiting to receive it. Number four, Terrence Cleveland, sophomore out of Sweetwater, Tennessee. Another one of the speeches. So far, the Tennessee speed on offense has been pretty well controlled. Anthony Miller has not seen the ball since the very first possession of the ball game. Cleveland at the three. Got a hole. Or they can scoop. He's out around the 34-yard line. Cleveland is just one of the many wide receivers that they have on that roster this year. Take a look at the first round draft picks out in the NFL. Wide receivers at Tennessee over the years. Started in 77 with Morgan, Stanley Morgan, Anthony Hancock, Willie Galt, Clyde Duncan went to the Cardinals, and Tim McGee, all first round draft choices. Pretty impressive. Carrying the ball is Reggie Cobb.
Number 22, Dwight Sistrunk, the free safety for Iowa, stuck his head into the pack that time and got a piece of the action. And Keith, when you have wide receivers, it begets wide receivers. I mean, why does the university keep getting them like Tennessee and Anthony Miller? Why does Penn State keep getting good linebackers? Or Purdue getting good quarterbacks? It's the tradition. And the track will go. Running the ball, but nothing there for Reggie Cobb that time as they deck him back on the 34-yard line. And guess who's there? Big Joe Schuster and Dave Haight. Tennessee only two first downs since that opening uh, possession. Holes is out of the backfield now for Tennessee. And in comes another wide receiver. Anthony Miller is off the field right now. And Francis on third down and nine. Gets heat. Not intercepted. Hate hit him. Sean Ridley dove for the ball, and Sean thought he had one. But the official was right there and ruled that he tapped it. He was trying to get it over to Charles Wilson, so the Iowa defensive people do their job. Hate 64 putting the pressure on. When you have an offense, as you'll see the ball just hitting the ground, just barely hitting the ground. I'll get back to it in a minute. Bob Garman out of Birmingham hits it. Peter Marciano feels it, gets away from one, but the second man gets it. Takes him down at the 32-yard line. That's a 31-yard punt. Reggie Cobb made the tackle. Time remaining third quarter, 9 minutes and 22 seconds, 14-13 Tennessee as Mazda presents the kickoff classic. Well, we'll get the ball pretty good field position just short of their own 32 they trail by one point but you just sense that the Hawkeyes physical strength is beginning to assert itself this series may very well tell us something Hudson and Harmon are in the backfield Hartley still the quarterback he's going to throw it wanted to throw the short pattern and Tennessee covered it well and the pass is no good to Mark Missouri and here's Mike Adam Lee Keith, you know, people watching this game at home and not familiar with the Iowa football program may wonder what the letters A-N-F stand for in the Hawkeye helmet. Well, for the last three years, the players have worn the decal with pride. The letters stand for America Needs Farmers. It's Coach Hayden Fry's way of saying we care and bringing attention to the plight of the farm industry, of course, the backbone, economic backbone of the great state of Iowa. Keith? Thank you, Mark. Second down and 10. Travis Watkins comes wide. They run it inside with Dave Hudson. And Tennessee gangs up on him pretty well and will stop him after a yard or so. You know who's uh, played a pretty good football game for Tennessee, looks to me like, is that number 88, Tracy Hayworth. He's been flying around all over the place. He was a uh, sophomore. He uh, lettered last year, was expected to, to really come on and play well, did not start the ball game, but is in there now and playing well. Get him two yards on that carry. Make it third down and eight. All right. Make him move around. Finally, he dumps it off to his tight end, Mike Flagg. And Mike Flagg is run down by Marion Hobby. Now, that's a fair match. Hobby is 6'3", 255, and Flagg is 6'6", 250. Number 70 at the top of your screen is Pratch, one of the top linemen for the Hawkeyes. In fact, Fry says that he could possibly be the best that ever played at Iowa. Now, that is saying something. There have been a lot of good offensive linemen come out of Iowa. Mark Adams in the punt. Finally, he got one. He had a little trouble with his leg to this point, but he nails that one all the way back to the Tennessee 16. Cleveland takes it. And a penalty flag goes flying as Terrence gets back to about the 24. 47-yard punt, 8-yard return, and let's see about the penalty. Almost always, either illegal use of hands or slipping in this kind of a call. We had our annual rule session with David Nelson, University of Delaware, the man who wrote the book. And they are really cracking down on blocking below the waist. Flipping! 
on the receiving team, on the run back. It will be first down after the penalty. So they're going to mark off the penalty against Tennessee now, and it'll be first down for the Volunteers with eight minutes and 20 seconds to go in the third quarter. This may be a put-up time for the Volunteers' offensive unit now. They haven't done much the last few possessions. They've had the ball. The first possession of the second half, they really didn't do anything with it. I think when you're when when you when you rely so much on on one means of transportation, and that is the passing game, and you can't run the football, and if that's not going well, I think you tend to get a little bit frustrated. Well, they run it this time, give it a Reggie Cobb. And Cobb is out for a couple of yards to about the 12 from the 10. Now, Keith Davis has not been in there. Remember, Keith Davis is coming off some leg problems. He hasn't played a whole lot in this ball game. One carry, three yards. Uh, so Johnny Majors may have just simply, or somebody in the coaching staff, may have decided to season Cobb and, and save Davis. Vando Davis hasn't been very obvious either. Roland Poles is now in the lineup with Cobb. And this is Cobb. Oh, he cut that one off pretty well and gets up to about the 19. But he's a couple of yards short of the first down. We talk about offensive linemen and some top players. Here's Galbraith again, the All-American candidate. Watch as he leads Cobb around the end, showing his ability to pull. It's kind of an if block. They call that an if. You can either block the linebacker straight through or go around. Cobb diving for the marker, and he may have it. It took an all-out effort to get him there, though, because uh, at number 32 for the Hawkeyes, J.J. Puck almost got him, and then finally Pitkins did. J.J., captain, senior. Well, you talk about a square jaw. I mean, he is a square <laughs> jaw dude, isn't he? <laughs> Charles Wilson back in the lineup for Tennessee on first down from the 22 yard or so on that carry. So Tennessee trying to grind it out here and get a little breathing room. Well, they're trying to reestablish their offense, too, and take some of the pressure off of Francis having to throw the ball in the receivers, trying to say, hey, we don't have to throw. We can make some first downs rushing, and that's what they're trying to do right here. They've got to be able to, to balance that, that great passing attack with all their talent with some kind of running. This is Cobb again. Turns it, made a good cut that time. Got a heck of a block, but a penalty flag may wipe it out. A penalty flag may wipe that one out. Sistrunk made the stop on him. Yep. Probably the most hated thing in the world when you're just beginning to get a little momentum and out comes the yellow laundry. Well, that'll drive you crazy as a coach and give you gray hairs quicker than anything when you finally get a good running play going. Holding on the offense, second down. Wipes out a 17-yard gain, which would have been the longest run of the ball game. So far, the uh, longest run we've had today has been by Hudson of Iowa, 10 yards. Hey, one thing, Hayden's going to have to find some running game to uh, be a factor in the Big Ten, because you've got to run the ball <laughs> in that Big Ten conference. you got to be able to play defense, and you got to be able to run the football. Comes back to the 18-yard line. Keith Davis shows up in the backfield now, and he's back in the game, having started for the ball. They're going to throw it. Dump it off to William Howard, the big man. And Howard keeps on rumbling all the way out to the 30. So they get most of that penalty back and we'll be looking at third and one. This is a safe screen. This is a this is a spark of an offense. You can see the lineman peeling out in front of Howard. And Howard just doesn't go down with the first time he's hit. He takes a blow to get him down. But but the offense of Tennessee is going back to basics, not throw the ball deep, just throw some short stuff to get something started. Third and one from the 31. Howard. Iowa's defensive people gang tackle him. 
That was a reasonably obvious play because Charles Wilson had come into the lineup. He went in motion to the right side, which meant uh, really what amounts to old single wing type wedge blocking over there. But Steve Thomas and James Pipkins and a half a dozen other guys were right there. And they stop him. And on fourth down, Garmin is in the punt. This will be his fifth punt of the day. And it's a good one. And Marciano drifts back to his 24. Turned upside down at the 28 by Roland Foles, who's been in the backfield a lot today, number 42. 47-yard punt for Garmin. Return of three. You talk about being upended. This is this is it right here. I wonder if his uncle ever got hit this hard. Oh. Tom Paholski will be the quarterback for the Iowa Hawkeyes when we come back. 4.36 remaining in the third quarter. This telecast of the 1987 kickoff classic being produced in association with Raycom Sports. And Iowa will go to work now from their own 28 first down. Trailing Tennessee by a point, 14-13. Tom Paholski, 6'4", 205, junior, St. Louis, Missouri, started four games last year. He's now the quarterback, and he hits immediately on a rollout, quite early, and it'll be close to a first down in front of Terry McDaniel. If you just joined us, this is the third quarterback that has been used by the Hawkeyes. Paholski started four games last year, and Fry just brings him in and starts throwing the football. Of course, Fry knows the strengths of each of these quarterbacks, and if you're wondering, uh, McGuire was in for four series and scored a field goal. Paholski, I mean, uh, Hartlip was in for six series and produced ten points. Bayless is now in the backfield, along with Goodman for Iowa. Goodman has the ball, and on second down and a yard and a half, turns it back into the middle, diving for his first down, and the surge is good enough to get it. Brian Kimbrough, the tackle, junior out of Dixon, Tennessee. Bayless comes back out now. He's not played much today. Two tight ends, Cook and Flag on first down at the 40. Goodman. Never really got his feet under him on that slight delay. The fake pitch, and then he comes back inside, uh, running right by the quarterback. But never really got his momentum. If he had been able to plant and take one stride left, he might still be running. is on the 43 we're at second down and seven Goodman is out Hudson is in Mahoski on second down sets up a screen delivers it to Hudson Hudson ran right away from one Tennessee man and then got tangled up with his own man number 55 Dave Alexander and Terry McDaniel with the two fellows tangled up was able to get there and stop the big play but nonetheless, they still pick up a first down. Looking from behind the Tennessee defense as the lineman Alexander Anderson let their men go after a, after a delay. Nice move by Hudson. And Alexander with a nice block. And the ball is just short now of the Tennessee 47-yard line. And it's first down with Bayless along remaining back. Baholski's pass is caught. Good to Travis Watkins. And Watkins is finally knocked out of bounds. It looked for a moment that Tennessee's Victor Peppers might be able to get an interception out of the play, but not so. Kelly Days had to come across and make the hit, and Iowa's got another first down at the Tennessee 23. Peppers, number eight, with a lot of speed, tried to pick it off. Paholsky showing a good arm, just gets it there in time. I'll tell you, I'm impressed with all three of these quarterbacks that uh, Iowa has shown us. Now I can see what uh, Fry was talking about. Nice problem to have. Yes, it is. 23 yard line, first down, Hawkeyes, and Pahoski looks around, and his people are in the wrong place for the play he has called, and so he spends the timeout and goes over to talk to Hayden Fry. 
Since the inception of this game in 1983, the kickoff classic has been sponsored by the National Association of Collegiate Directors of Athletics, NACTA, as a benefit game assisting the National Football Foundation and its College Football Hall of Fame, which is located in Mason, Ohio, outside of Cincinnati. And the attendance today is 54,681. So it's a good job by those promoting the game here at the New Jersey Sports Complex. Fine turnout. And of course, Giant Stadium has been the subject of, uh, of, a, of, a, of a terrible subject, really, because the fourth New York Giant right now has come down with cancer. And there's been a big to-do over whether or not the location of the Giants as a training facility and the fact that they play here has anything to do with it. And uh, the medical experts so far have uh, disagreed that they see any possibility of any uh, connection between uh, the cancer factor and the Giants and, and uh, the location of their camp and training. But uh, the latest, of course, is Carl Nelson, who has uh, been found to have Hodgkin's disease. So there's going to be extensive investigation and research done into it. Poholsky sets up and goes deep to the corner, and it is incomplete. There was double coverage coming down on Travis Watkins. Watkins is quick. Two Tennessee volunteers got over there, but McDaniel and Days, it was McDaniel knocking it away with Days trying for an interception behind them. But Watkins showed some speed, sophomore out of Claremont, California. Good coverage in the secondary, and uh, Fry is going after him. He's the play caller, the quarterback, the old quarterback from Baylor, calling the plays, trying to move him around, trying to stay one step ahead of Ken Donahue, the defensive coordinator of Tennessee. Second down and 10. the ball is Rick Bayless and he'll pick up about three yards good mixture of run and pass for the Hawkeyes throwing on their, their running downs and, and mixing it up very well not only just uh, throwing in passing situations and that helps the quarterback and the other thing that helps the quarterback are the type of passes that he's calling for him. when he gets them in there they're safe passes to get them going a little bit gets them into the fire and uh, and not asking them to show anything that's uh, too difficult to begin with. Now it's third and long. Third and seven. Bayless going to run a reverse. This is Kevin Harmon, who was flanked out as a wide receiver, and Harmon's coming around, headed for the goal line. Touchdown. No flag. go back and look at that play you'll see that Harmon was out on a wing the play seemed almost slow in developing and then Cedric Klein had a hold of him in the backfield and he got away I go back to what Fry told us just yesterday we'll have a few surprises an innovator they're going for two points it's it's 19 19 to 14 this may be the alley-oop pass he's bringing in the tall quarterback they may try a uh, alley-oop to their tall tight end flag who is uh, 6-6. Six, six. Eight plays and 72 yards, and McGuire now is in the lineup. Flag is number 86. He'll be on the tight end on the right side. Cook is the tight end on the left side. Harmon and Hudson in the backfield. The big man, McGuire, and there's motion on the play. The pass is batted down anyway, and Tennessee probably will refuse the penalty, but one of the men in the backfield started moving too soon, and uh, that blew the whole thing right there. Well, Johnny Major says decline it. That was a special play. McGuire back into the uh, back into the lineup. We kept talking about a, a mismatch in height as we get the call here. Illegal motion on the offense. The point is no good. Five yards will be assessed on the kickoff. Go back to the touchdown. The man at the top of your screen is Harmon. Bryce said, I'll have a few surprises. A reverse on third down. Now, what's the speed of Tennessee? 
the speed of Tennessee's defense gets there, just does not make the play. Harmon says, I've got some quickness and speed too, and then makes a good move to get inside. Good blocking by Alexander, 55, and then Harmon into the end zone on the tackle of uh, Miller, but too late. That's his second touchdown of the day. It's now 19-14. The Hawkeyes have the lead again. It was interesting on that two-point try that they put McGuire back into the ball game, specifically to hand it off and then run into the end zone. Of course, McGuire 6'8", trying to get him on the, the small defensive back, uh, Peppers, who is 5'8". Is Only a foot taller. <laughs> Peppers made a nice play. Murphy will kick it off, and Cleveland will return it, or try to, for Tennessee. Hawkeyes lead it by five. 153 to go in the third quarter. It's a high kick, going to be a little shorter than the others have been. At the 10, it's Cleveland. Looking for the hole, cutting back toward it. Couldn't find it, and goes down at the 21. Brought down by Jim Riley, and here's Mike Adamley. Well, Keith, you know there's about 20,000 fans that came up from the University of Knoxville, Tennessee, but one volunteer fan is from Chicago. He is Jeff Francis's dad, Charles Francis, from Mount Prospect, Illinois. I know you guys are on the downside of a 1914 deficit, but I think the volunteers and Jeff in particular have looked pretty good. Well, let's hope they come through now because this is the time to do it because this is what we need a good, good uh, offensive drive here. I certainly hope that they do it. The, uh, Tennessee has a really a great team, I think, as far as receivers. I think he'll do well for themselves. Oh, he's, he's scrambling. I don't know about this. Oh, that was all right. <laughs> he needed that one for a little confidence, I think. <laughs> Uh, Charles, I think you're a good luck charm. You're calling the play-by-play, -play and Jeff does well. Well, we followed Jeff all the way through, and we followed our older boy, uh, Scott, at Augustana. You know, Augustana had a record of, uh, he, he played, I don't know, four years and lost one ball game. Exactly. So uh, we're enjoying the game. We enjoyed New York. We're ready to take it easy. Okay. Keith? All right. Thank you. <laughs> From the 36, first down for the Volunteers. And they run it with Cobb. And he'll have close to four on uh, now make it about two on the carry. Second down and eight. Well, Francis's parents seemed as though they've lost where their roots, they were, they were born. Both his parents were born in Iowa and attended the university. Well, his brother is there now as a graduate <laughs> student. So uh, <laughs> it doesn't sound like they're, uh, they have any uh, problem rooting for Tennessee at this point. This is Cobb again. Cuts it back. Look out. Oh, my goodness, he tripped over his own man. He tripped over his own man, Alvin Harper. If he'd kept going right, he'd have been on the sidelines and long gone. Take another look as you see the toss. Hate 64 is battling with center. Now watch the gap that opens up right here. This is toss. Just string everything wide, and he cuts back in. Schuster can't get him, 72. Harper, number 81, <laughs> is 6'5". He just couldn't get all of his feet out of the way. It's first down, Volunteers, at the 36-yard line, and William Howard in the backfield carries it right up the pipe and picks up a couple of yards. Well, Majors told us that they were very high on Cobb, and they wanted to get him into the ball game to see what he could do and if he could get some explosiveness and some breakaway threat into that running game. And it certainly has happened here this afternoon. Well, he's carried it 13 times today for 61 yards. Second down and eight, just inside the 35. And the quarter is over. We've got 15 minutes to play as Mazda at the, the, the kickoff classic. And Tennessee and Iowa have a five-pointer going with the Hawkeyes leading. It's second down and eight as we go to the fourth quarter for Tennessee. Just inside the Iowa 35-yard line, the Hawkeyes leading 19 to 14. Francis pitches to Cobb. Cobb cuts it back inside. Takes a wicked hit, but he's still going to pick up the better part of six yards on the carry. He's a big game youngster, and he took a lick from Jim Riley, number 30, uh, 95 for Iowa. Big Jim from Dubuque. Looking at third down and three now. 
Miller, we're Anthony Miller. We've been trying to find out. We have now confirmed he did injure a knee early on in the ball game. Here goes Cobb again. Got his first down. Well, you know, one of the, the tip-offs on how good a running back can be, and uh, the old truth of it is, is they get stronger as the day goes on, and Cobb seems to be getting stronger. Every good passing team has got to be able to run the ball some, and this is going a long way toward building that offense for Tennessee. Good move by Cobb. Gets the first down. Myron Kepi almost got there too late. It is first down, volunteers, at the Hawkeye 20. And Holmes is back in the backfield for Tennessee. There goes Cobb again. A yard that time to the 19. As Iowa's defensive flow was led by Brad Klost and Myron Kepi. Well, you can see Tennessee uh, last year didn't fare all that well in the fourth quarter. One of those, of course, involved that blowout by Alabama up at Knoxville. Keith Davis now shows up in high back for Tennessee. Davis gets a good block. Penalty flag is thrown. Jeff Francis is scrambling, gets inside the 20 and knocks down at around the 15. But look out for that old yellow flag. And uh, Haight, Dave Haight gets up very slowly for Iowa and Tennessee flags for holding and Dave Haight's going to have to leave the ball game. That's going to bring in Steve Thomas at that nose guard position. To follow up on the story of Reggie Cobb, in the first half he carried six times for 21 yards, second half 10 times for 56 yards. That's holding on the offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, second down. There's Haight on the sideline. 64 is Haight right here. He gets hit right there. It gets hit low. Keith Davis took him down. Keith go home and cut that out for his highlight film. Look what I did to that big guy. Haleback took him down. Ball comes back to the 36-yard line. They've got to go inside the 10. So you're looking at second and 26. Francis dumps it off to Poles out of the backfield. And again, to go back to a point Bob made early on, the Iowa secondary has faced up to its chore very well. well. The secondary is just playing loose. Watch the, the deep men here. They'll all go back and play deep. Now, these linebackers are dropping into the shorter areas. Now, watch the way the three men on the right side of your screen will go deep. Very soft and containing. Everybody has their receiver well in front of them, forcing the quarterback, Francis, to dump it off short. Make it third down and 26. Cobbs is back in the lineup. And they run that little delay, give it to Reggie Cobb, and Cobb takes it back into the center of the field and down to about the 27, 28-yard line. And that, of course, is going to bring on Mr. Rich with his kicking tee. Lee England holds it. Tim Stafford does the snapping. This would be a 45-yarder. He was wide left from 51 yards earlier in the game. 12-13 to play. Success here will bring Tennessee within two points. Iowa leads it 19-14. He's got enough leg. And he's good. So Rick hits it from 45 yards. And it's now a two-pointer, Iowa 19, Tennessee 17. There's your score and the time remaining. As Mazda presents your kickoff classic, 
Bill Rich will kick it off for Tennessee. Kevin Harmon and Quinn Early beat to return it for Iowa. Rich takes an extraordinarily long run at the ball before he kicks it. And hammers it low and bouncing down the hill and it's picked up cleanly by Kevin Harmon who's been a stout figure in this ball game for Iowa. And he comes up with a good return there to give the Hawkeyes field position at their own 34 first down. Mike Adamley now. Keith, to answer your question, we have found Anthony Miller. He is here on the sidelines in street clothes and on crutches. Anthony, tell us what happened. Well, I was over on the right-hand side catching a hit, and um, I came down kind of on his wrong, and we went and checked it out at halftime, and, and the knee was given a little bit, so he said um, we'll, check it, we'll check it out more than when we get to Knoxville. So they're not sure as how many games you might miss, if any? No, not right now. Okay, tough break, but uh, hang in there, kiddo. Oh, I will. All right, Anthony Miller. Out of Pasadena, he came to Knoxville, Pasadena, California. Pahoski is the quarterback for the Hawkeyes. Wants to go deep with it and does. And it is incomplete. Thrown well beyond the intended receiver, Quinn Early, with Victor Pepper covering for Tennessee. We'll remind you that at the conclusion of this afternoon's game, we will select the Holiday Inn players of the game with each of the general scholarship funds at the respective universities receiving $1,000 each from Holiday Inn. Yep. Eight may be done for the day, huh? And low block. Banged him up. Kevin Harmon is in the backfield. He's behind Dave Hudson. And Harmon has it. That's a pretty cute little run there for about 12 yards. Harmon is having an outstanding day. He was injured most of last year, and his backup, Bayless, came on, led the team in rushing, made all Big Ten, and was the most valuable player on the team. Bayless not getting to play much, as Harmon showing you some moves. Miller, 45, is juked out. Kramer misses. Here's a look at Bayless. First down, just over the 45. And Harmon out for a moment to get a breather. The host is passed, is zipped, intended for early. And a bit too high with Terry McDaniel covering for Tennessee. The has got some zip on the ball. The is a strong arm, too, but... Uh, uh, Hayden Fry continues to mix the pass with the run. He's got all these little uh, plays over on this chart. Probably has plays that he wanted to run with certain quarterbacks. And he's got his third quarterback in there now. And uh, I don't think we're going to see, I don't think we're going to see either the other two again. No. Unless, uh, unless there's an injury. Second down and ten. That pass is on the numbers to Quinn Early. And Early is spun out of bounds at the Tennessee 41 by Kelly Ziegler. So that's another Hawkeye first down. Here's Early right here. He's just going to go down and break to the outside as the outside receiver were clear down the field. This is a relatively safe pass. You throw into your quickest receiver, a little down and out, and hope that he gets by the by the tackle, but uh, a nice play. Ziegler just recorded his 16th tackle of the game. Early <laughs> just caught his ninth pass for 132 yards, and this is Kevin Harmon dancing around in traffic. And he wiggled in there for four yards, maybe five. Ziegler led the volunteers in tackles last year, and uh, he certainly is starting off this year in fine fashion. Early comes out for a breather, and Travis Watkins goes in to replace him. You lose some in experience with Watkins, but I'm not sure you lose anything in speed with him. Bass and Harmon in the Iowa backfield. Behind Paholski, second down five. Paholski zips one, incomplete. Pass intended for Mark Mazzari, the junior, out of Park Ridge, Illinois, in front of Victor Peppers. Well, Victor's seen a lot of folks running through his neighborhood today. 
They've but he's thrown, held up pretty well. They've thrown that way a lot more than they've thrown over at McDaniels. Both McDaniel and Peppers missed some of spring practice because they were on the track team. Shows you the kind of speed they have. A lot of the uh, Tennessee football players in years past have uh, also participated in the track team. Iowa six out of 17 in third down conversion. Little delayed handoff goes to Kevin Harmon. Harmon trying for his first down. And he's going to have it. He got across the 30, and that was the key. And that was that last turn that he made. Got his head and shoulders over that 30-yard strike. I'm going to mention the offensive line for the Hawkeyes. A little flip forward again. We've seen that as you see Cratch blocking the defensive end for uh, the Volunteers out, creating a lane up inside. The offensive line for Iowa doing a nice job with Cratch and Wester, the two big offensive tackles leading the way. Devin Harbert, junior out of Walnut, Iowa, is one of the wide receivers now, and the handoff goes inside to Hudson, stack him up in second effort, and that'll be worth a couple of yards. Time remaining, nine and a half minutes. And when you talk about offensive linemen for the Hawkeyes, take a look back in 82, 84, and 86. Three first-round draft choices coming out of that offensive line. The latest, Mike Haight, the brother, is playing here today. And from what the Hayden Fry says, Cratch could be right up there and make the fourth the number one draft choice in the last five years. Bayless is the tailback. Pahulsk is in trouble. Gets the pass away. There were two volunteers there. McDaniel, the principal man, getting some help from Charles McRae. And they'll rule that an incomplete pass. There is no grass rule in college football. Quarterback just a football player. If that were the pros, it would have been a grasp and control call, and he would have lost the yardage, but he got rid of it. Johnny Majors is uh, hoping that his volunteer defense can hold on. Down two points with nine minutes to go. It'll be third and eight for the Hawkeyes. Incomplete. Covering on the play, Marv Cook, receiver, Cedric Klein, strong safety. So the strong safety picked up the tight end when he came across the middle. And he made the play, and it is fourth down and eight. And here comes Rob Houtland. Rob Houtland is a guy who knows something about pressure. His 41-yard field goal won the Holiday Bowl as time ran out. 37-yard field goal beat Minnesota last year. 1985, he won two games with last-minute field goals, so he knows something about being in the kitchen. <laughs> And it's good from 42 yards. So he's good from 42, 27, and 42. Three field goals, and Iowa leads by five. 22 to 17. And Mazda presents the kickoff classic from Giant Stadium in the Meadowlands. Down now to whether or not the Tennessee offensive unit can generate some results. They trail by five points with eight minutes and 49 seconds to play in the game. Iowa has been able to control pretty much Tennessee's passing game. They really have, and they've done it with a bend-don't-break containing style of defense. It's a frustrating style if you're a quarterback with a lot of speed, but I think back to the Fiesta Bowl this last January when uh, the Penn State and Miami were there, Vinny Testaverde was there with all of his guns, and yep. Joe Paterno and the Penn State Nittany Lions came in and just sat back deep yep. and took that away. The same philosophy today uh, is, is being shown by the Hawkeye defense against Francis and his speedy, uh, speedy receivers. And they're going to beat me. you got to do it on the ground, and Miami couldn't do it. Well, they could have if they won, but they, they chose not to. Yep. Ball's rolling around causing some problems, but it is finally picked up by Keith Davis. And Davis gets something out of it as he gets up across the 20 to about the 24. I don't think 
they want to use Davis all that much in this ball game. Though, because let's face it, the most important thing for both teams is to win their conference championship because that puts them in the New Year's Day bowl game. Well, both coaches talked about playing a lot of players early in this game. The only thing we have not seen is the second unit offensively for Tennessee that we were told we might see. Davis is in the lineup. But they are throwing the ball, and Francis lost it up, running underneath it, or trying to at least, is Eric Cleveland. Now, that's the kind of a play where Anthony Miller has been a primary receiver. But Miller is out for the hurt knee, and Cleveland could not run it down. Well, what you're going to see is what we were just talking about. These guys, these defensive backs, are going to be down there deep, trying to take away the deep stuff. This time, Tennessee says, the heck with you. I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to throw the ball deep. And Cleveland, at the top of your screen, if you'll stop it right there, you'll see that he had him beat by three or four yards. He just overthrew it. Second down and ten. Reggie Cobb is in the backfield. Be right back. He's got the ball. And Iowa gets Reggie at about the 26. Yeah, the revealing thing there, Bob, is the fact that... Uh, Sure, the ball was a bit long for Cleveland, but the fact is he was four yards beyond. The they were event. they were as deep as they could be, and he still outran them. And Hate is back in there, so he bunged up a little bit, and they rewrapped him and opened the door and said, "Sick him," and he's back out there. He's a gamer. William Howard, the long remaining back, on third and ten, Francis. Getting some heat, gets it off. He's got a man over there, and the catch is made at the 38-yard line of Iowa by the lanky Alvin Harper. If he'd have had any real estate left on that side, it'd be touchdown because there was nobody with him. No question. The corner up here is going to let him go to the inside, and then he's going to break back to the outside. It to end up in a two-deep zone, and watch Francis as he lays the ball in there between the short man, the corner at the top, and the safety to the right top of your screen right now. He's open. Took him a little bit longer to get in the ball. Maybe if he got him a little quicker, he could have yep. run there. Yep. So it's a big play for the balls, and Reggie Cobb thundering now beginning to look more and more impressive as the day wears on but that was uh, Wilson leading the block coming down the way that time so this big red shirt freshman uh, very obvious in the ebb and flow here I'm sure Johnny Majors is concerned about his uh, passing game with the loss of Anthony Miller, but he's got to be pleased with the running game. Second down, one. Could be a time to go deep. Nope. They'll go for the first down, and Cobb gets it. Moving the ball down to the Iowa 23. U.S. Amateur Golf Championship scheduled to follow as soon as our game is complete being played in Jupiter Florida Cobb now has uh, run 20 times for 109 yards one of the fellows in the uh, in the uh, final round of the US amateur uh, UT man Cobb again right up the middle Terry Burt stops the touchdown. And the Tennessee front of Galbraith, Burt, and Bruin just blew that one wide open. Oh, it's not the offensive interior, especially the center as he goes out and makes a block here on the linebacker, and the running back comes right up the middle. Burt, excellent block. Two good blocks on the two inside linebackers. A little credit to that offensive line doing a nice job. First down at the 11. This will stop him. I don't frankly know why. I don't either. We had one play earlier in the game where the nose tackle jumped off and the center snapped it and he said it was no play. Let's get the call. Todd Kirk's involved in this one too. <laughs> there you have a drill where referee. if anybody's off sides, he just goes ahead and snaps it. Uh, 
The Otter. defensive man moved, but did not enter the neutral zone. So the down count, it is second down. Cool. Okay, there he moves. Now the ball is snapped. And he gets down. Now, he did that intentionally. This is something they work on. Now, that's fine. If he got back, the ball snapped, and he's down, so it's in play. But I don't understand why that other play didn't. Because he snapped it when he was in the neutral zone, right. and they didn't give him the five yards. There was no play the last time. Yeah. This time, they get dinged down. And it'll be second down and 10 from the Iowa 11. Five-point ball game. I don't think Majors is... Uh, I, I don't know if he wants to talk to somebody about this or what. Well, he's entitled to a conference, but... If he's wrong, he cost him a timeout. <laughs> he got 6.20 to play. That clock's been sitting up there whittling away now. 22-17. Iowa trying to hold on to that five-point lead. This has got pass all over it. Francis back. Goes into the middle. Had his man and missed him. Number three, Nate Middlebrooks, the tight end, had broken loose right in front of the goalpost. And so he missed true. him. You're so right. They had the three wide receivers in the game, and I'm sure... Now here are the three wide receivers. One, two, and three. And all these defensive backs are concerned about him. But watch the tight end sneak over the middle, and he was the one that was open. Tight end sneaks in. There's two linebackers coming. He's open now. Ball was thrown just a little bit late. And well designed play. It is now third down for the Volunteers. Setting up a screen for Cobb. Takes one. No, nope, it's Howard. Howard. And William can't break two and goes down. In comes the kicking team. Bill Rich on the field with five nine to play. 22-17, Iowa. It'll be a 25-yarder if he hits it. It's good. Clock shows five minutes and 14 seconds. Iowa 22, Tennessee 20. Now in Tennessee's situation, the pressure moves to the other side of the ball, the defense. They got to get a hold of Iowa and hang on. Iowa does not have a real deep man. They might possibly anticipate something of an onside kick, but I wouldn't at this juncture, not with five minutes and 14 seconds to play. Marciano and uh, Harmon are standing up past, well, near the 20-yard line. As if they don't expect Rich to kick it any farther than that. And all day long now, he's been kicking those low-line drives. And I think maybe they're sneaking up there trying to get this one early. This time, he puts it in the air. But it's still caught up around the 20, so it was a good move by the... And Harmon shakes the man and returns it past the 30 to the 32. So I'm sure somebody in the eye of a coaching staff had said, wait a minute, this guy's not kicking the ball past the, 10, uh, the 20, 15 yard line to most. Get up there and get it early. And we remind you at the conclusion of today's game, we will select the Holiday Inn players of the game. I think Frank Boyle uh, waves his arms uh, and, and uh, I used to love Frank when you see a, a, re uh, a receiver go back there and let a punt drop on the <laughs> ground in front of him. Yeah, the old coach, huh? Catch the ball. Catch the ball. First down for the Hawkeyes. Tennessee defense may have to gamble from here. Rick Bayless wiggling on the sidelines. We'll move it up to about the 35. Tennessee may very well have to take a chance in this defensive series. Well, there's five minutes left to go in the game. Tennessee has three timeouts left, so... Uh, I don't think they want to do anything yet. If they made a couple of first downs, the, the, the thing that would really hurt them is if Tennessee went down and got a touchdown. But if 
you want somebody to be a gambler, you've got the right guy sitting up in the press box calling the defensive signals in Kent Donahue. Second down and seven. So that's the style of this Tennessee defense. Back goes Paholsky. Shoots it out here, and the pass is dropped by Craig Clark tied in. It was a little high and beyond him. He got his fingers on it, but the senior from Columbus Junction, Iowa, couldn't reel it in. Tell you, you've got to give credit to Hayden Fry. He said he was going to play a lot of players. This is a key drive. He's at, he has his third string tight end, Craig Clark, in the ball game. All three of those tight ends are all Big Ten, so they know they're smart enough to play. They're academically, all Big Ten. Paholsky now is one of his last eight passes. Tries to stay with him. Third and long. Going big for early. No sense. Through a crowd down the middle. Hey, drew a, drew a big crowd. Keith. Here's early here. He's going to go straight down the field, and there are three defensive backs around him. The other receivers are going to be short. Early goes straight down, and as you can see, <laughs> if you wanted to throw <laughs> to the wrong guy, you, had, you, you don't you want to throw the single covered guy. Adams gets away a fine punt. Runs Cleveland all the way back to his 19. And Terrence comes back to the 29. 47-yard punt, 10-yard return, and 437 remaining in the game. Tennessee has the ball. And as noted there, you'll be seeing the amateur in just a few minutes with Eric Redman and Bill Mayfair. I'm Keith Jackson along with Bob Greasy and Mike Adamley and this is the kickoff classic and Tennessee has the football first down and here's a red shirt freshman named Reggie Cobb who has become a big man in the Tennessee running game today and Iowa leads in the ball game by a score of 22 20 so this may very well be the crucial possession for Tennessee if they hope to win this game Brad Quas is shaken up and on the ground now for Iowa, the fine sophomore linebacker. So Brad is down. And time is taken out in his behalf. Anthony Miller, a Tennessee wide receiver, also has an injured knee and is out of the game. Way down yonder is that little square thing with G on it. That's the glory land for Tennessee. They trail by two, and Brad Quast is going to have to leave the game for the Hawkeyes. He had ten tackles as he leaves the game. Mike, you got something? The uh, wide receiver, Jim Morrow, who we saw leave the game earlier for x-rays, it was confirmed he did break his oh. uh, bone in his right leg, his lower right leg, so uh, he looks like he's out for the year. Oh, my, that's a heavy loss for the Hawkeyes. Second down and about seven for Tennessee. Ball out around the 33-yard line. Jeff Francis wants to go deep with it. And that'll get a flag. Iowa man grabbed him and pulled him down. James Pitkin grabbed Terrence Cleveland and threw him down. And that's a 15-yard pickup. Wasn't any question about it just the end of it both number fours Pipkins on the right is a red shirt freshman playing this year for the first time now they're both looking for the ball I don't agree with that I don't agree with Got that at all up, didn't he? yeah they were both looking playing for the ball Pipkins number four in white didn't do anything he just stumbled on himself that's an incidental contact get their feet crossed up it is not marked at the spot of the foul, however. It's a 15-yard penalty, and so Tennessee is going to have a first down yeah. just uh, short of their own 48-yard line. No, I, you just, uh, the rule in college football is an interference is from the spot, and in pros, it's where the uh, foul occurred. But uh, Which do you like? Which do you think is the most fair? Well, in this case, I like it taking it back where it did because I don't think there was a foul, so... 
<laughs> Back goes Francis again. Getting some pressure. Gets away from it. Good move by Jeff Francis. Got a man wide open on the sideline. Nate Middlebrook. And it'll be another volunteer first down near the Iowa 35. Dan Worth was the man chasing Jeff Francis, but Jeff showed some quickness there, getting away from the pursuit. Showed a little class there, too, a little quality. He didn't pressure, didn't get upset. When the pressure came to him, he just spun out, found a receiver, and got it to him. 3.51 to play in the ball game, and it's at the Iowa 36, first down volunteer. Reggie Cobb's back in and has the ball. He's turning out to be a bully, isn't he? He's down to the 28. This could really be a potent offense if they get Cobb in there as a strong runner and the passing that they've got. He's got 130 yards now. On 23 carries. He's out. Keith Davis is back. Second down. Short three, long two. About two and a half. This is Davis. He's quick. He's got a first down inside the 20. White Sistrunk took his legs out from under him, but he picks up another Tennessee first down. Sistrunk number 22 right in your picture in the forefront will end up making this play. Good blocking up front by Still, 79, and Sistrunk just goes over and knocks his leg out. You were, I presume, a quarry at one time of Otis. <laughs> the man from Mars. Yeah. <laughs> William Howard in front of Keith Davis. Davis. Dave Haight, bunged up earlier, back in there, brings him down. Bill Rich. Rowling a little on the sidelines now as the clock shows 2.20 and running. 22.20, Iowa leads by two points. And we're headed toward two minutes to go in the ball game. Reggie Cobb is back. He's had his breather. It's second down and eight. Cobb's got it. Slash you. Lashes inside the 10-yard line. He will, however, be just a little short of his first down. Watch the block by the right guard here, Bruin, as he pulls and blocks to the outside. Excellent offensive guards for the Tennessee Volunteers. Galbraith on the left. Look at the block there by Bruin. He just pulls his way through there. Tennessee is in field goal range, Keith. I'd be surprised if they put it up. They can afford, they've got time to grind on it. Third down, a yard and a half. Big play here for the Hawkeye defense as Cobb goes over the top and picks up the first down. Clock will stop until they mark the ball. Well, I'm not surprised. We expected a close game. Both teams are ranked in the top 20. Both teams are in the chase for their championship in their individual conferences. There you see Doug Matthews trying to get the play call that uh, Walt Harris up in the press box, the offensive coordinator, wants him to run. Howard is now your tailback. William Howard, the big man, and he's got it. And he won't go down, as Bob said, on the first hit. He was hit behind the line of scrimmage and hit pretty hard. But he kept on banging and at least got back to the line of scrimmage. It is second down and goal. A little surprised here that Iowa is not stopping the clock. They have two timeouts left. And you got a half a minute coming up. One more play and probably the field goal. And he's down to the two-yard line with 10 seconds. Nine, timeout, eight, seven, six, 
And they finally get the clock stopped with six seconds to play. Well, you know what's going to happen. Bill Rich, Jr. from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, has a chance to win it for Tennessee. Here's the magic moment. Six seconds to play. The ball is resting at the three-yard line for Phil Rich. And he's looking at a tough angle. Well, you, I, you know, I think Johnny Majors is trying to call timeout with 11 or 12 seconds. It's on the one-yard line. I think he wanted to run another play. He'd much rather run it in. Now you've got it all the way on the left hash mark. Look at the two hash marks on the left side. The one furthest left is the college. The one inside that to the right is the pro. This is a tough angle. Lee England holds it. Tim Stafford snaps it. It's good. it through from 20 and seemingly has won the game for the volunteers of Tennessee 23 22 just an excellent drive to get rich down in position to kick the winning field goal pressure kick no matter how short it was the toughest thing about that was the angle the U.S. Amateur Championship round coming up in a moment with Eric Reppin and Bill Mayfair and our Holiday Inn players of the game for the University of Tennessee. Reggie Cobb, 25 carries, 138 yards, 117 in the second half for the University of Iowa, Kevin Harmon. Kevin Harmon uh, with uh, 11 carries, 40 yards and a touchdown running, four receptions, 60 yards receiving and a touchdown. And so the two young men out of the running back position, responsible for a thousand dollar donation to each of the university's general scholarship fund at Iowa and Tennessee, compliments of Holiday Inn. Next game for Tennessee, September 5, Colorado State in Knoxville for the Iowa Hawkeyes, September 12 at Arizona in Tucson, and that won't be easy either. There's a look at the two young men responsible for the donation of $1,000 today to their respective university's general scholarship fund. Rich, the place kicker for Tennessee, will get the, the credit and the plaudits, but you've got to give yep. the credit to Francis and Cobb in that offensive unit took the ball down and scored when they had to score their last possession of the game. Well, Walt Harris, the offensive coordinator, outstanding job. I like to call them big uglies. I mean, the big folks up in front in the trenches, a uh, vital part of that whole story because, well, you pointed out the block Bruin made that opened that door, that one big run. You don't no go, question. no halfback goes anywhere without no a big question. ugly opening the door for it. I think we showed a, a graphic a little earlier that showed how Tennessee was outplayed in the fourth quarter of a lot of games last year. Today, I mean, in this quarter, Tennessee has had the ball over 11 minutes. Iowa's only had it about three minutes and a half. So today, Tennessee has dominated when they had to. Only three picks remaining on the clock. Rich bounces it downfield where Grant Goodman pitches it back to Quinn Early, and Early looking for some running room. He flips it back to Kevin Harmon. Kevin Harmon's still wiggling around. Now it's flipped across to Cobb, uh, or Cook, the tight end. Cook is still going. Now it's thrown on the ground, picked up, and it looks like Cal Stanford of a couple of years ago. But Kevin Harmon throws it up in the air, and Tennessee finally catches it, and the ball game is over. Well, you might as well have some fun with it, and they did. Kelly Days winds up with the football. And so that's the story at the fifth kickoff classic at Giant Stadium in the Meadowlands as Tennessee beats Iowa 23 to 22. We hope you enjoyed it.